right. Yes, we're live, baby. I think it's working now. I think it's working now. You live, baby. You live. You better watch all profanity. <laughs> Hey, this is Joe for the Joe Wentz Project, and you're watching Show Me Your Pick right here on YouTube with Fruitcake Tony. Now back to the show. How we doing? Saturday oh, night. We good. Yeah, dude. Good to see you, Brendan B. Square, Sandra, Tommy, Charles Green. Yeah. On um, Saturday you? night. Yeah. Great night to be streaming. It is. It is. And it's nice to see you guys. How's your week been, Sandra? It's been a great week, you guys. Good. Okay. Awesome. Nice. Nice awesome. to see you, Tommy. Good to see you guys, too. Got the dirty honey swag on, I see. Right on. Nice. From nice. This gentleman right here. Looking nice. good, bro. Looking good. Hey, Tommy. Is, is that shirt so soft? Yes. Like crazy okay. soft. So is yeah. mine. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Like the softest <laughs> T-shirt I have, I think. I know a guy. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> they're are always so really, soft. They're so they soft. Are, they're, they're really nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're super comfortable. I think it's why my son stole it. Why I had to steal it back. Yes. <laughs> right on. We um we weekend. are glad it's the weekend. Always good to see you guys. Happy Saturday night. It's April the thirtieth. The end of April, um, all of a sudden, seems like we're yeah, popping into May. We're moving through. Um, yeah. Hope it's, spring like weather is where you are. It certainly is where I am. No, it's not here. Ooh. <laughs> it's in the 30s and 40s. Like 66 today. It was, yeah, it was hot this morning or uh, this afternoon, but this morning it was like 38 degrees. <laughs> it's still crazy, but good. For, I like that weather. So. It's going here. I had a yeah. busy week. I had a busy weekend. My my mom came up to visit. First time I I've seen her in about a year and a half. So oh, wow. nice. she moved down with my sister in Jersey. So it was nice to see her. Yeah, cool. So we had a nice weekend. It's very nice to very see. Good. Yeah. Very cool. Yep, a nice visit. She made she made me some uh, cold beef and cabbage because this is the first year I didn't get it. Can you know because she moved. Mm -hmm. So, but every yeah. year. Because she, you know, every year she used to make it, and uh, I didn't get it. So she goes, "You want me to make?" I go, "Yes." <laughs> it didn't even finish the sentence. Yeah. So, so we good. I got some of Mama's cooking, so I'm I'm happy. Was was that for St. Patrick's Day or just in general? She makes it. She makes it for St. Patrick's Day, you know. Yeah. But 
but she hasn't been, you know, she, she doesn't live up here anymore. So I was spoiled for my whole life, you know? Yeah. Now my sister gets to be spoiled. So I'm like, okay, all right, I'll share, you know, sharing's caring. Anyway, enough about me. How's everybody else doing? You guys have been talking about food for the last 10 minutes. I am so hungry. <laughs> Charles is right. hungry. Good, Good to see everybody, man. It's good to see yeah. you. Yeah, we got a lot going on. We're talking Steve Clark, the great yes. and late Steve Clark from Def Leppard. Um, we got a special guest, too. I'm looking over here to my right up here, and we got some cool kids <laughs> in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and... Do a little roll call. Who's here, Sandra? Uh, Dean Lowry, BC Rich 581, Leo Felka, Janice, Leo, Janice. Hey, Janice, Christopher Sell, I think I said him, Thomas Santiago, Butt Cheeks is in the chat, Dana, New Jersey, Guitar Man 45, oh, no, James 5150, hey, Josh. Welcome. 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 here. Welcome. Few, I'm not sure. Thomas, Ed, hi, Ed. Ed, James, Ed. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry, but thanks for popping in. And we'll, we'll see you come in. We'll yeah, catch you. We'll, we'll pop catch them as they come in. Yeah, welcome. And if you're newly subscribed here, thank you. Um, we hope you dig things around here. We talk rock music every Saturday night here, guitar picks and memorabilia. We talk all things Van Halen on Wednesday night. Um, so check that out. And yeah, so welcome mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Christopher. You got a Def Leppard t-shirt on there, Charles, I see. Yes, I do. Nice. The axe. Love Def Leppard. Yeah. Nice, nice to see Def you Leopard guys. Too. Leo, Dean, Thomas. I remember a radio station near me, a local one, used to have something called uh, Smash It or Pass It. Mm -hmm. or play It or Pass It. Yeah. And, uh, that was the days when you had the old Panasonic tape recorder where you had to hit the play and record to record the radio because, you know, yeah. on that old... Yeah. Been there, so, done that. So a photograph came on, like, oh, click, click, click. you know, photograph. And I, I called in, I got in, I'm like, play it, man. Well, in my voice, like, play it, man. You know, so I'm like 12. That is know? so cool. That so, is so cool. But that was the first time I heard that. I, was, I love that song. I used know? to do that. I'd be washing my car on Saturday morning, and, and a song would come on, and I'd have it all queued up, ready to go, and I had to just sprint for it and hit just at the right amount of time. I'd lose a couple of seconds, but I got well, some yeah, great I mean, tunes that way. And you get the, uh, you know, the, the DJ talking right up to the post. You know, it's like, all right, buddy, you don't have yeah. to hit the post every time. You can be a little early. Mm -hmm. Some of my best Iron Maiden tunes in the early days came from the radio. They used yeah. to, I, Maiden and uh, Priest, they used to get a lot of airplay in L.A. They yeah. really did. You get uh, really I remember when it. Let It Go came out. Um, my God, man, for about two years, that was, it's still to this day is one of my very, very favorite songs. And it comes up on the radio from time to time. Yeah. And it always just, I, God, I love that song. Oh, it is yeah. one of my all time oh, yeah. favorite songs. I've got to see them play that song several times live. I got to see it back in 1980 in a little venue called the Sa uh, Santa Monica Civic Auditorium, the same yeah, place nice. that we kind of broke out of. Yeah. And um, that was their opening song in those days. Um, yeah. And they had nice, uh, Willis, the original guitar player, also. Um, those are really, really memorable times for me. And I, the band just has always been, when I was in coming out of high school, they were one of my very top bands, very top bands. Yeah. Always. Have um, been. let me, let me say we've got some, we've got trivia. We've got some, some cool trivia happening tonight 10 shot rock and roll trivia where you play against me 10 questions about music and rock and roll trivia 
I'll leave the room while you answer 10 questions, and then I'll come in and answer the same 10 questions, and we'll see how we fare. Um, but we'll grab us a contestant a little later, so if you want to play. And this week, this is the third week, right? Fourth week. Yes, this is All our right. third week. We're trying to get different contestants in. It's not rock solid on that. But when you come in to play, please cut your YouTube off. Yeah. No, fourth right. week. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, because it creates an echo that you can't hear the questions. and. Yeah, Sal messed it all up last week. I'm kidding, Chris. Also, a heads up to the chat. All of my trivia questions tonight are related to Def Leppard. That's oh, all I'm going to say. That's all, all right. I'm going to say. A themed one. All of them are Def Leppard related, yes. Okay. That's all good. Right. Def Leppard with right. under the hips from their out in the neck. All right. Hey, hey Tea Cake, I think the guest is eating all the stuff in the back room. We should probably you get guys, them out. Yeah. Here. You guys oh, you heard, heard yeah, that. Yeah. Def Leppard trivia. Ten, ten of them. All right. So Some we do pounds. have a special guest. And um, we, we are always honored to have this guy here. We love him. He, he's got a great YouTube channel. We watch him every week. We watch him and Tommy. Um, you all know him, but if you don't, his links are always down below. Yep. In the um, but so yeah. please welcome the great. Ben Coons, there he is. What's going on, fellas? Fella. Ben, how you doing, great. dude? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, um, yeah, I, I can say right now, I know Tony works from morning till night on this YouTube thing because the post went out on the community part of the channel there the other night. Hey, we're doing a Steve Clark episode. I immediately grabbed my phone and I said, I'm inviting myself on. For that. <laughs> and yeah. he didn't reply, which tells me he posted it and went to bed or turned off his phone <laughs> or I don't know. So the next morning he's like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, I was asleep. I'm like, Who's waking me up? I'm like, oh, that's cool. So yes. Um, <laughs> One of my all-time favorite guitar players. I can't say the most influential other than everything outside of playing guitar. That's clear with me. Um, but, uh, yeah, my spirit animal, Steve Clark, or one of, I will definitely say for sure. I'm so happy to be here to share stories about Steve and, you know, his yeah, playing, man. his gear, yeah, dude. his songwriting, his you know, wardrobe. I don't know. Yep. Whatever you folks want to talk about, I am down. I've refreshed the old brain synapses, so I remember stuff that I used to remember and then forgot due to lifestyle choices. You know, we got <laughs> no, 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 lifestyle choices before we hit the air, folks. So hey, <laughs> it'll be a fun show. Um, hey, yeah, uh, <laughs> I even sent Tony a photo there just as we're going live, like saying Steve wasn't the only one that wore his guitar a little low at times. So. I, yeah, yeah, that's one. If nothing else, I took that from him. But uh, yeah, and I saw somebody else mention that. And the by far the lowest Sloan guitar. I'm the, the only honorable mention can be Ben Shepard from Soundgarden, and he played bass. Yeah, and Billy so Jones, he only had to play with fingertips. He didn't have to hold a pick. Billy you know, Joe plays pretty saying. low. Billy I think Joe the closest Day. I've seen low. to Steve Clark is Nuno. Nuno plays ridiculous ridiculously low oh, does or it? does it appear he plays low sort of like a Les Paul appears large on Randy Rhodes that's true because Nuno is very tough. <laughs> optics I don't know yeah I don't know it's Some strange guy. strange right. too though because you know like you said backstage uh Clark was classically trained and if yeah. you're classically trained you're playing like this you know there, yep. Yep. so he was probably like all right I'm done with this <laughs> you know yeah like so. When he would play his EDS 1275, and I was like, who fella, you know, that 12 string's a little low to be playing. And then you think, oh, and then he's playing the six below that. And I was like, how? How? Yeah. How? And then I saw a photo of his hero, Jimmy Page, with the EDS 1275 all slung around yeah. cap and kneecaps and such. You know? yeah. Okay, well, 
I wonder if his arms. I'm not stretched. that much of a man, but I'll try. His arms got longer throughout his career. I wonder. <laughs> Stretch over time, right? Well, and I notice when he does a lot of playing, he does a lot of posing and stuff, yeah. and like say moving that guitar up, you know, mm. into more of a classical position. Like that yeah. wrist must have been just curled right around. And, Had to. Yeah. <laughs> like we were saying off air, you know, uh, both guitar players. Uh, by like pyromania going forward once we had the production value and stuff where uh, it became they're one of the handful of bands that actually did ar musical arrangements and didn't just write songs like even though they went largely from charles as you were saying the early stuff by the time pyromania hit definitely hysteria they moved from hard rock to rock with pyromania to pop for the most guitar oriented pop uh, orchestrated and arranged musical arrangements uh, mm -hmm. where both guitar players were playing different things and the bass players playing something else. Sure. Yeah. Big, huge sound. You can do that, which is amazing. Yeah. And I am brushing up on this. I was watching live stuff. I was like, okay, how are you pulling this stuff off? And we're hearing these beautiful dual runs. And I was saying, off air, you know, Phil's got his guitar up, you know, Eddie Van Halen style, which mm -hmm. makes sense because Shredder. you can you'll know, play that stuff. Yeah. And then Steve's like, no, I'm good down by my knees. I'll just follow right along. I'll follow you. And it's like, how, how Steve, how uh, Steve was really tall. He had incredibly long arms. He had incredibly big hands and long fingers. Slash. Yeah. Where's a Les Paul slung low? He does. Yeah. Uncomfortably I do as low well, but not me. that low. Yeah. Like I, to the point where I was like, but, I actually thought Steve was yeah. on the small side. He yeah. also was an optical illusion. You know, it was like, if you put, take my guitar strap and Les Paul and put it on Randy Rhodes, it's yeah. going to be like Steve Clark. Yeah, but, exactly. Exactly. But, but long no. arms, long fingers, lanky yeah. guy. Um, the extreme opposite uh, of Colin. The exact extreme opposite, yep. I believe. Colin Jazz influence Clark, uh, not <laughs> self taught. Yep. Self taught. Um, yeah, basically classical lessons and listening to Led Zeppelin records. Like it's literally exactly. classical. I'm so sorry. And I didn't mean to say self taught. I meant to go the other direction. I'm so sorry. Let me correct myself. Clark uh, classically taught Willis and Collins self taught. Right. Shredders. And so it was that contrast of the two. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to say that incorrectly, you guys. And um, oh, just good, the man. contrast between them. And it's interesting because when Willis left, or was, you know, however that happened. <laughs> he left. Um, the transition was accepted really well. Yep. The guitar players immediately bonded with one another. And mm -hmm. Clark and Colin, they got their own thing going, man. And it was live. Then it dude. became it the Terror Twins live. after that. Pyromania yeah. yep. was... Yep. The terror tour killer it was a killer show killer tour uh it was before the drummer had his accident right uh the whole dynamic of the band was different they yeah. had a brief window and i'm gonna say something and this is something that has always stuck out to me personally about the band Def leopard and they are one of a kind one in a million and for this simple reason uh in my mind when their buddy lost an arm it was over okay any other band would have found a new drummer any other band would have found a new drummer it was baffling that that actually was able to be pulled off and accepted by their fans much less yeah, yeah. it could even be uh, they were a bigger band after his accident they progressed well, and, and like you're saying like they they, the band could have replaced them, but they gave them one chance. Well, they said, just okay, you. you have that one chance. Show you the camaraderie between yep. those guys. Right. I just, I, when I hear, you know, when I heard it, I remember I was throwing darts in a garage in Redondo Beach, California with a bunch of guys drinking beer. And it came on the radio on KLOS. I'll never forget it. And the DJ says the band Def Leppard, uh, it, it already, the accident had already happened. It was six months later, I believe close to a year. And they were starting to talk about uh, how he was still playing drums and he was actually experimenting with a kick drum snare and how it would, and I'm sitting with, I'm, we're, you know, we're half drunk talking about it. No way they're going to pull this off. No way it's going to happen, right? Negative, mm -hmm. just off the bat, because 
I didn't expect. I nobody expected it. It changed the complete Joe, dynamic Joe of your music. Him, oh, go ahead, bro. Joe, go ahead. No, Joe told him. Joe said they were just waiting on him to say he couldn't do it. Yeah, exactly. 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 He gave him that happened. one chance, and he said, "Like, let me figure this out and do my yeah. thing. Like, yeah. I when when I'm ready, I'll call you guys." And then after yes. Yes. so much time and working with Simmons drums to figure like that. Who that really that? enhanced the whole triggering thing because yeah. we weren't doing that stuff. Yeah. You know, we had electric kits, but it was still, well, we got to make it look like an, an analog kit because drummers won't, you know, it's got to look like a drum kit. And then we're like, no, can you just, you know, really the pads only have to be big enough to make contact. And the, uh, okay, uh, let's do this. And then he shrunk his kit down physically so he could do that ergonomically. And then Called the boys and said, "Okay," and then played "When Levy Breaks." He literally anyway. did a drum oh. solo. Uh, I saw him at the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. I forget the year, mid '80s. It was mid '80s, and uh, it was the first tour they did. You know, where, where he actually toured without his arm live, and uh, the music had already been out there for a few months. And the tour had been going good. So there was a real positive curiosity with the fans. Oh, Optimism exactly. that was mm -hmm. almost a disbelief. I swear, I remember standing there and the, they start playing. And the initial vibe from the crowd was one of astonishment. And then awe. And then amazement. Period. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did a drum solo. He did a flipping drum solo with one arm. And it was good. Yeah. Very impressive. Very impressive. All right, I, I have a question for Charles and Tony, because I know you guys are very much heavy concert goers through, you know, and are aware of concerts as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Outside of, I'm thinking, a smaller intimate setting on the scale of the Hysteria Tour, you know, arena tour in the round. Who, who did that prior? Right. I don't think anybody. Like, I'm thinking. Oh, that's true. You know, like you would see certain settings like an Austin City Limits where let's put the folk artist in the center of the room because it doesn't matter. Well, I, you know, I, and we didn't mind sitting cross-legged on the floor looking at their backs for an hour and a half you know, yeah. during a performance. There but are some country acts that do George Strait plays. In now, the I think Metallica after, does Garth it now, Brooks, but I don't know I when they did it. I think was the next after Def Leppard. I thought Garth Brooks was the next one yeah. to do when, it. When did Metallica do it? Because they started doing it a while back too, but not before Def Leppard. You know. Nobody before Def No, you're right. That was the whole thing. Right? Everyone's like, Leopard. you're going to look at Rick Allen's ass for the show? Like, where, where's the coolness in that? You're just selling at the cheap seats behind the stage. Like, oh, no. Oh, no. No. The, the stage doesn't rotate. Rick does. Stage doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Really? What? Um, there was a video it. that uh, Eric Clapton did also, and the video was shot in a, in a spin. The video spins as well like, as right. if the band's in the round. Um but I think Def Leppard Ben did it first. I think you're right, brother. And then, of course, your your boy Tommy Lee there, Charles, saw the rotating drum kit, and he said, "Hold my beer." Yeah. He took it down. <laughs> he he took the rest of the rock to roll another level. level. He took it to another <laughs> level. Can uh, we do it this to you, tour? No, I just want to point out a side note at the forum in Los Angeles. My girlfriend and I, and he will Hopefully. at least twelve of my closest friends are all around 18th row, center stage, and he comes out. And he's upside down spinning, and his sweat is dripping off him, and we're feeling it rain on us. Uh, priceless, priceless crew moment. Just had to go there for a minute since he brought it up, Ben. But, <laughs> yeah, man, that was so cool. Because that's part of rock and roll is the hold my beer with the tours. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like, got out know, like they, the Hysteria album, that tour had to succeed because they had $5 million tied up in that album. And... Yeah. And I don't know which suit decided to release women as the first single off that album. You know, in the UK, they released Animal first, which I get, mm -hmm. you know, that's a great second single because it's kind of slow, which is traditionally mm -hmm. what you do for a second. But women, which I thought honestly is one of the weaker songs on the album, <gasps> you know, especially like the if, they, they, if they if they came out of the too. gate with portion some sugar on me would have been mm -hmm. just as big. Yeah, as the build up to pour some sugar on me because mm -hmm. 
sorry, the riffs, the, the only difference was the hype was they were able to shoot the videos because they're already touring in the round. So that mm -hmm. helps, you know, because, you know, that video yeah. was so flipping huge. It was popular. It was very popular, though. But, it was my favorite. Not my yeah, favorite. like I remember I bought the album on discount when it came out because it was released early August of, what, 87, I guess? 87? I, right. I think 87. Okay. 87. Yes. And yep. Women was the first release, and <laughs> cassettes were usually 10 bucks. Mm. 10, 11, you know, especially that one should have been 11 because it was so long. It was an extended play album, but it was six ninety five in the discount right. right off the bat. That's cool. That's cool. And I went, Score! I get to save like three bucks and I get the new Def Leppard album, which I don't know if it's any good or not. And then the first thing you hear is women. I'm like, ooh, I don't know about that. But by the end of it, with God's of War, by the time I listen to that album through, I'm, oh, 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 oh. we got yeah. another Pyromania on our hands. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I heard the pop too. And it's like this crossover. Because dad in the music industry was very, you know, he's like, you know, if you get a crossover, that's all what you like. The first time you mm -hmm. he heard Georgia Satellites, keep your hands to yourself. He went, that's a standard. That That's a crossover. That's a standard. I was like, ooh, a standard. That's even bigger than a crossover. I know this vernacular. <laughs> Well, some sugar yeah. on me has become a standard. When I heard an all-girl country band covering it in Nashville, that mm -hmm. told me I went, oh, "Hell, there it is!" You know. Oh, wow. you know. Wow. Very cool. Uh, bands that toured with Leopard. Interesting enough. Um, a lot. How did they enjoy playing in the round? Pat Travers. Anyway? Pat Travers in the early '80s saw him twice, I believe, mm -hmm. with Def Leopard. A band called um, Blackfoot. Yep. Was on a bill with Uriah Heep, I think it was. And so, and I never heard, I mean, I'd heard of Uriah Heep, but I had never seen them. So I saw them once. Um, but they actually toured for a couple of years with Def Leppard, uh, yeah. at least in the West. This is, I would have been West Coast at this time. They're still touring. Really? Wow, really? Yep. Wow. They're wow. ancient. <laughs> now they're ancient. Man. You're back to playing the club circuit, but they're out there doing their thing. Yeah. 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 I'd heard that. I'd heard that. Yeah. First time I saw them, they had um, Crocus as the opener. Nice. That was very cool. Pyromania. Um, in mm -hmm. the round, um, I saw them in the Dean Dome over here in chapel hill and they they had tesla i guess opening up yeah that would have been around 87 yeah. 87 tesla yeah at tesla was open that, or, that, yeah i, I, I was gonna say that, if, if there's a show in town to take your girlfriend to or the show in town your girlfriend buys the tickets to and goes honey i bought us concert tickets and you're like oh dear lord what are we gonna see in there <laughs> def leopard and tesla you're like Fuck yes i love you you know that's it <laughs> Because yeah. somebody well, said the chat, they've right seen there, it several absolutely. times. Like, it's a good 70 30 mix. I was like, yeah, it's not a sausage fest, that Def Leppard no. or Tesla. No. <laughs> well, my, my, my take on that album, I, I thought, yeah, as you said, Ben, it, it's tough to top Pyromania, you know, it, and High and Dry is almost holy. I mean, it's a great album, but the the thing started. If you listen to the the first one, the production on it's crappy. On through the night, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's yeah. Can it, it's well, can they're still mixing at it. that ACD. You know, like, it's coming right out of ACDC, where but it's just mic the, the band, get it in, mix, you know, like. There, you're, but, you're not polishing ACDs. You know, there's no polishing there. You're just arranging and make, you know, mixing and you know, sonically. That's all you're looking at sonics with ACDC, and it makes sense because the key you, like, ingredient there that came in '81 with High and Dry and continued was Mutt Lang. Yeah, right. So that that was what doing his infamous three album mark as he likes to do with bands, his trilogies. And, and uh, I think that was the key to them. Yeah. And um, at that time, I think we were saying it off air. They were more of just a 
standard rock band, both guitar players playing the same thing, which, again, nothing wrong with that. 99% of bands do that. <coughs> and Mutt mixed it accordingly. He goes, okay, you, you want a rock album? There's your rock album. And then with Pyromania, I think he saw the way, you know, because Mutt sees shit. He's smart. Oh, music, you know, hey, heavy guitars are bleeding into pop. You know, we're bleeding over into pop radio. The Van Halens of the world were getting pop radio play or top 40 radio play to a certain yep. extent. So we need that bleed over. You know, where's the teeny bopper hit? And that's when they started that transition through Pyromania to you can see it. Like you gotta look at them as that trilogy in many ways. You can see the transition from one to the other. And then, I was a little bummed at that, Ben. That transition. I like the oh, first, I get two it. Albums, first two Dude, albums. Dude, I get it because show, honestly, show, show. Be. not only had I not bought another Def Leppard album after Steve passed, mm. I haven't even listened to else Adrenalize. Yeah. Like yeah. other than you know, a public is on where a video's on TV yeah. or it's a song's yeah. playing on the radio. Um just they, whatever they, peripheral song. They went you down that hear. Aerosmith, just nothing mm. but yeah ballads and i'm like holy fuck you know like yeah. aerosmith if you release another two word titled ballad i was going to open a vein i'm sorry you know yeah yeah um, so so charles green so in 1981 <laughs> when mm -hmm. you have a big albums like acdc back in black and fair warning and it's just awesome tell them what kind of album high and dry is yeah. high and dry is the kind of album that you don't really care so much about the technical quality of it you crank that thing to 10 and you um you get wasted when you listen to it uh with your friends mm -hmm. it's just uh, that's that's what it's made for song. that's right. what it's made for um some of the best rock songs it's not heavy metal now it's not heavy metal no. it's hard rock yeah, how we classify it. You can call it whatever you want, but that's yep. what we called it when it came out. And um, it is as good as it gets. Quality of the production doesn't mean anything to me um, as far as what the album represents. I, you know, it, it, you know it's interesting. Interesting because uh, John Conklin did an interview <laughs> with uh um oh give me his name again guys it's it, it's Mike Fraser thank you very much Mike Fraser sorry Mike Which is awesome. I forget your name I, it just I've got a lot awesome. in my head right now um did an interview with him and it was something very interesting that I I was thinking about during that interview when I started listening to just record albums back in the early 70s I think my brother walked up to me with like machine head deep purple in like 71 when I was like Shoot, I was 11 years old, 10, 11 years old. And the quality of it was wonderful. And, uh, and, and uh, that was the benchmark in quality of what a hard rock album sounded wonderful. like. Wonderful. It was wonderful. I think, would you I agree, Charles? Everyone, all the producers were kind of trying to recreate that for the next decade. Like, yeah. as for their own personal, like, I want to recreate a machine head quality album. Well, it's when guys like Phil Spector, uh, who's a wizard and mm the production and the, the recording of music he's he's iconic at it he had some wonderful things that he created he was inventive um and uh and guys like uh like fraser uh the what they bring to the table is by far better now than it used to be as far as technology and they bring it but the way we receive it is different yeah earbuds are different than some nice pioneer speakers a couple of pioneer speakers they're 125 yeah. watts cranking that sucker on like a marantz or pioneer uh stereo system like we used to listen to um it was a different experience was it worse no was it better no it was great for the day mm -hmm. but what i've noticed and some of you gonna think I'm crazy, but I swear to God, I put on my my kids. My kids have gone retro, and they're getting into vinyl. Go figure. Why? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Because it sounds music better. quality. The quality. My daughter likes Definition. the sound of putting rumors on and dropping the dropping the stylus down on the album, and it's just like different. 
And she's got high end everything. She can throw high. She got high end everything, but she wants that. Well, I'm thinking, how many times have you, you know, you're listening to an album, and you know, after a while, you're like, oh, you know, like you get into the second verse, and you're like, I better dial that back just a touch because there's actual dynamics. They built up the volume. They bring yeah, it down. Yeah, bring, yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, you know, because you set a benchmark. Well, you might be playing a song where they're playing a half volume the first half of the song, so well, you need to. For instance, like, the Beatles. Let's just record it on four yeah. tracks. Four tracks. Then with eight tracks, you have the ability. It's all about mic placement and where things are placed. And at that moment, you're talking about magic, working magic, doing your job. Uh, and it a little bit different. It has to be in a different way. I'm not an engineer, but it has they to be. They did so much with so little. Differently. Thank you. And so now I know with things like Pro Tools and stuff, it gives you a lot of just – Take it for granted. You can just you you can just do so much more. I understand, but there's something missing. There's something missing, and it's not necessarily That's the produced. Everybody else is just point. mixing more from the way we listen to it. I think. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's uh, just you know just an observation. I don't know. That's and, true. Yeah, because you know a producer now where it's all digital, you're just painting by color. <laughs> you're adding this. You're taking out that. You know, whereas yeah. analog, you got to tune that stuff in and hope it even works and it doesn't make some weird phase issue or, mm -hmm. you know, you don't worry yeah. about stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I do like sound compressed. I do like a compressed sound um, to a certain degree. Well, you, yeah, you, you do. You, know. you do have to compress it somewhat. Um, but, yeah, you, you, you don't want to be all of it. Just a bit. You like the compressor on your guitar tone? Just out of curiosity. I rarely use it because you lose all dynamics when you play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm all about, I like the fact that I like setting up stuff that much of where if I dig in, there's more breakup. It's interesting because, um, so I've just gotten into this positive grid, you know. I like a compressor on a digital world. I didn't like compressors on a pedal board. Never did, haven't, but now I, I use it as a tool, Charles, where it's yeah. so blatant. You know, yeah. like if you're going for a chicken picking tone where you want yeah. that super compressed yeah. heli tone, yeah. Like <clears throat> to quote Jay Mascus, I like pedals that you know when they're on, and so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. that's where you know, are you using a compressor? You know, if I'm using a compressor, there you go, like, oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. I find it funny. I, I like it in a digital world. I, I would I probably like use it, it you know? in metal as well as country, like, you know, the opposite ends of the spectrum kind of thing, mm -hmm. because both you want that punchiness. Yeah. Whereas yeah. rock, I want that sloppy mushiness. Mm. I, I enjoy the mushiness. That's where I thrive, Charles. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Just as a side thought, um, and let, wait, let me just check something. I just want to make sure before I say this. Uh, I was watching your show with David Nesdal and the guest you guys had on. What was his name? Chris. With the Les Paul. Chris something. Chris, that's right. Chris. Um, I was listening to you guys talk about action on guitars. He, I was listening to him talk about the action on a guitar and talking about real low action as opposed to having it up some and letting uh, the strings move. And there's a certain something that's, you know, you mm -hmm. can, it lets you move the strings, gives you more of an attitude. It gives, shows... I don't know what the, the dynamic of the way you play, you can change things up a little more. Right. Uh, and it was interesting. I was going to give uh, Dave, actually, I, I, I was working when I was watching, but I'm going to give him a shout out for that. That kid is great. And it was a great show. Um, and it's interesting. I like low, low, low action in general. Flat, low action. Yeah. Uh, that's me. Low as possible without buzzing acoustically. But on a Les Paul, I like it up a little bit. Okay. Because you can characterize a little different on Les Paul. Well, yeah, it, it's not Les Paul like Telecasters. You got to fight them a little sometimes. Yeah. Well, and that's part of what I. That's what I'm. Yeah. Exactly what I mean. You know, that's why you wear Les Paul so low. You don't. You don't play a Les Paul to be yeah. comfortable. Yeah. You play it to have it bounce off your hip bone and hurt your back. Well, we were we were saw Dirty Honey a couple of weeks ago, me and Tony, and uh, what was so cool is we we're close enough I could see the action on his guitar from time to time i could get a shot at it he didn't have it ridiculously low he had it up a little bit he had there was there was a little clearance there yeah it was pretty cool yeah anyway, i don't know why i went off on that but yeah man def leopard guys def leopard steve clark so <laughs> um 
let's talk about his gear a little bit. Um, you know, largely known for playing uh, Les Pauls, or I actually I should say Gibsons in general. Gibson, because... Yeah, he was he was uh, a sponsor by them for a while, right? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. There was a deal there because he was playing mm-hmm. like what had to be, even though I, I can't remember the exact year the quote unquote custom shop started, but there's always been a custom shop at Gibson, which is right. You know, like. Tom here. Tom walks in. And he goes, "Hey, I need a new guitar." And he goes, "I want this done, like uh, Steve Clark. I want a Kaler. I want a locking nut. I want this and that." Well, we don't have a custom shop, but I know Charles has been building the best guitars on the line for the last fifteen years. I'm pulling him because that's what they had prior to a custom shop. Was you had a, your group of trusted guys who built the custom stuff for the artists, yeah. and you know because Steve was not a tech. Um, he, he would tell you that he, he was not a tech and it's interesting because in some ways he modded guitars, but other ways he didn't like, he was about the Kaler trims cause he liked having a trim, which was as much function as preference because a lot of their music had vibrato parts. Um, but yet for the most part he used stock pickups. So, you know, he's like, Oh, whatever, you know, and we're talking seventies and eighties, less poles, which, Generally speaking, are not the best Les Pauls. Well, good enough for him. Hmm. So, yeah. um, those white Les Pauls aren't off the shelf of his. They are definitely a little too han- handsome for that. Yeah, and he had that little Kaler wraparound, kind of like the Duesenberg trim. Like, I'm hmm. trying to find because it looks very non invasive, is if invasive, I don't know how invasive. Hmm. I, I'm really curious to find one of those. I don't know what, because, you know, like as much of an enigma as Steve Clark is, he never did a rig rundown because they didn't exist. Uh, he didn't really do any interviews. And there's no clear photographs, you know, those, you know, like we have so many of Eddie Van Halen's gear over the years, these all of a sudden these high resolution, perfect shots to see a lot of stuff, you know, compared to speaking to other guitar players. His stuff, it's like there's a shine over the tram or, you know, because it's stage shots. Yeah. Uh, there's very little posed shots out there. Yeah, that's interesting you say that, Ben. I I can't I can't actually think of a photograph I've ever seen where I could actually see it either. Yeah, and he also played a Firebird a lot. He loved his Firebird. I like Strats too in the studio. You know, he yeah he loved the sound. Yeah, he had he Strat. did have a Strat briefly in the early days of Def Leppard, which I don't know if that's just. You know that happened to be the guitar he owned when he joined the band. I don't know what the deal is there. I mean, and he well, he um, played it on Love Bites too because he loved the sound of it during that song. So he did I think have that it, one. But, might have been Phil Collins. Uh, oh, could have been Earth Strat yeah. that he had yeah, he there. It. He, yeah. I was watching an interview, yeah, or a thing <laughs> where it was like Phil Collins answers Steve Clark questions because Steve isn't around to answer them basically, gotcha. and he had this like a a super Strat type thing. Because I think yeah, I had a humbucker in it as well, and uh, Steve really liked it, and he used it a lot on yeah. the album. He uh, still was saying he really liked it, and he's like, "Oh, you really like my?" Because that was the deal; they were always allowed to play each other's guitars. And then Steve's like, "You never played my guitars." He's like, "No, because I have the nicer guitars." Yeah. And he would purposely not play Steve's gear just so he could hold that over his brother in our, you know, in arms type thing. Mark. Well, I, I, like, I like Firebirds too. Firebirds are cool looking, you know. They really are. Yeah, fire. and of course he had his EDS 1275, yeah. which yeah. I don't know exactly what it was used on, but who knows? In the world of Mutt Lang produced albums, <laughs> that thing could be all over it. You don't know, you know. Hey, do I, I think know? he did use it live for Hysteria, possibly yeah. with an Ebo. Mm. But it had different pickup. Actually, it might have had some weird sustaining. I was trying to get a photo of it. It almost looked like I was looking. He had more than one. He had a red one, just like Jimmy's. That was his first one. That looked stock. But his white one had almost what looked like P90s under the 12 string. And I've never, and I'm like, well, that's custom shop. Like, what's that? that that's a guitar I've never seen before or since. And I don't, I'm like, what are those pickups? You can't tell because it's a low red. Like, I'm watching a YouTube video of him playing it around live doing this. And I'm like, can <laughs> a fellow hold it? Still? I remember him with Les Pauls, and I, I believe I've, 
I don't think I've ever seen him play a strat. And I've seen him in concert a bunch of times. Yeah, I don't think he would ever play one live. Live, it was the Les Paul the Firebird. Yeah, Les Paul. Firebird a lot. Yeah. I've never seen him with a Firebird in concert either. Just Les Pauls and an acoustic. Must have been, yeah, that night maybe he, in the rotation, he just didn't feel like playing the Firebird. Because I know he played it on the Hysteria tour. He played a lot on Hysteria, so. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, Joe Elliott played guitar during the show, too. And what kind of guitar did he play? I don't remember. This is not part of the official trivia, folks. I'm just throwing it out there because, for once, I actually know the stuff. Uh, I remember him with a strap. That's what I remember him with. The live footage I saw, which I believe was the Denver show, oh, which I must have been the, the live release, uh, he was playing a Steinberger. Mm. Oh, wow. Nice. What? Wow. Yeah. Never just saw a little that. teeny tiny Steinberger. And it was just for what? During the solo or bridge of Hysteria. That's right. Yeah. Mm. So, and it was probably, you know, he probably used it because it has piezo, piezo, yeah. Or both mm. installed. Yeah. Because, you know, just to play that kind of chuggy acoustic. I, oh, man, I'd hate to be the sound man during, during the stereo tour, guys. You know, like, I'm hearing acoustics, and I'm like, nobody on the stage is playing an acoustic. And this is 1987, Brendan. This technology doesn't exist. Like, no, no. they're not stomping on pedals. They're not using IRs. <laughs> and They're not. You know, but also in the round. Do you see a fucking cabinet on stage? Sorry to curse, Tony, but no. Yeah. They were already... Let's just hide the back line. Let's just hide the back line. Um, you know, would have they have been one of the first to go the Kemper route? You know? Good um, question. Because also during the stereo tour, Steve Clark was prototyping a lot of TC electronic stuff, which yeah. everybody was using by the 90s. It was all in Steve's rack in the 80s. Because he was their guy, which I did not know. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, Steve Clark was our prototype beta tester. I'm like, well, that just makes sense. But he's such an enigma. You don't know that. It's like, Tom, he's the BV ninja of the actual rock and roll world. That's what I'm saying. You know, you of course he was beta testing TC electronic stuff. Of course he was. You know, it explains those beautiful chorus tones you hear live on the stereo tour. I'm like, he's got your 80s rack chorus, Tom. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Except it was just known as that rack. Back then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. I do think that Mutt Lang made a huge, huge difference in their in their outcome in their career. Oh hell yeah. Um, like they took the ball and ran after hysteria. Like once they knew what to do, you know. Because they were all songwriters, they were all involved in the production side. That by the time Mutt went, I've done my third, you know, you guys carry on. And of course, and they also had to pick up the pieces with Steve's passing for Adrenalize, and they had a handful of demos and this and that. And um, I had forgotten until today that Phil's the only guitar player, as far as I know, you hear on the Adrenalize album. Because he sat down and learned all of Steve's parts, as he called it, for the album. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Dude. Which he said was pretty hard, some of the stuff. And that's not just emotionally, but he's like, I don't play at all like Steve. Mm -hmm. And so, so that was one of his things, was, which was awesome. He could channel his friend and it's like, I'm going to play the parts like Steve would play them, not like I would play them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he, he used a metal pick too. Yes, they he? both used like, metal picks, but Phil uses a thick one and Steve used a thin one, I believe. And he liked uh, Jackson sustainer pickups. So I don't mm -hmm. you know. Those are mm -hmm. the ones I think you, th those are like his signature sound. You yeah. Know? Talking about Phil, uh, Colin? No, Steve Clark. Steve, really? Yeah. Uh, cool. uh, Steve cool. never used Jackson pickups? Says he did. That would be Phil. Phil's the Jackson. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's yeah. What I was thinking. I'm just reading this. Yeah. Well, I know it's the internet, and it has to be true. It's a, right it's a fun. It's a fun fact. I'm pretty sure a Jackson Sustainiac pickup wasn't even invented yet well, before Steve passed. He he used a well. He used a, 
But then again, it wouldn't surprise me if he, he says, here's it might not have been in concert. Leopard. They were but leopard. he he said it said that he used a uh, Ibanez destroyer too from time to time with Jackson Sustainer pick. Uh, very cool. I know. Well, what did they not? I know at least Phil, but did they both not have Hamer destroyer? Explorer, whatever invader, I don't know what their errors were, but they had the, that shape as well. I'll just look it up some facts. Rick and, did. Uh, hey, Steve Rick Carmichael and base. the Hawk himself. What's up, Hawk? Rick played a ha uh, um, hammer. Base. Steve also had a Dean for a while, I remember. He briefly had the Dean. I'm wrong. And then a lot. He had a Hamer. What was that? The Cadillac, Tom, that had. Lester Paulfus body with an explorer horn hanging out. Yeah, yeah. I vaguely <laughs> remember that one. That was weird. I was just like, I want one of those because it was only like Steve Clark and like Rick Ocasek had one. I was like, Yep, yeah. they're it different. Kind of guys, yeah, that thing's different. I think you know, it was like you had to play rock and roll, but you could also wear a skinny tie, and it was okay because <laughs> they're like, Well, That's the right, he did rock the thin tie, didn't he? Yep. I swear you to know, God, for a decade, yeah. I kept thinking those things were going to come back. What, what you tell once that band had some money, because my God, they had no money. Like, Charles, you and I, especially, I know on this channel as well as mine, we've discussed how poor Motley Crue was starting out. These were Good Sheffield place. boys. Mm -hmm. uh, if yeah. you don't, you know, that, if you don't, that's a factory town. And yeah. like, uh, when you watch. Oh, uh, what is it? The Rock of Ages video? Like half mm -hmm. the glam rock look that they're wearing, they're wearing their girlfriend's clothing. Yeah. 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 You know, or their like sisters. Anything, or their scarf. sisters. Yeah. Or their sister. You know, like yeah. I need a scarf yeah. to hang off the microphone because Steven Tyler has one. Well, uh, I can't afford to buy one. So, you know, it was stuff like that. Um, you know, the infamous Union Jack shirt that Joe Elliott's wearing in the video, bought on the way to the video shoot. You know, my favorite Alex Van Halen photograph is him wearing a women's, I guess you'd call it an evening jacket. It's something that they would wear over like their pajamas or something like that. But it's got short sleeves, like coming like half arm length. I it's know the photo you mean. Throwing it, and he's just rocking that thing with a pair of sunglasses. And it's just so badass. Yeah. Anyway. All roads lead to Van Halen, you guys. I just thought I'd go there for a minute. I, I love the early they Alex. so many trends. There you go. But yeah, you think about like even by the height of it, the, the hysteria tour, you know, like Joe Elliott's wearing ripped jeans and you half the time wearing their own merch, which yeah. was always, I always thought was hilarious, you know, wearing their own merch and stuff. But I, I swear part of that was marketing. Wear the new shirt in the video, Charles, then everyone will buy it at the merch table next week. Mm, smart. Wearing a pyromania. Um, he came out, uh, Joe Elliott came out and uh he was talking to the crowd it was maybe the fifth song sixth song in it's kind of it was it was it was into the concert and he he stood there and he had a a, a t-shirt with the arms cut off and it was a british flag on the front yep and and uh he says how you like this one la and he take and he just ripped that thing down it was an american flag on it and he threw that shirt out to the audience and it I was actually at that show. I was working for West Security, and the shirt flew over my head to about the fourth round. Nice. Two pieces. Two people got it. Uh, but that was so badass. That was really cool. They, well, they and that's it. And then, like I say, they're wearing channel. jeans. You know, of course, Rick Allen's wearing next to nothing because he's a drummer, and that's what they do. They just love to get naked on stage. But then just a Steve is dressed like Prince. Like, I'm going to have a $2,000 suit. You know, yeah. and because it was all you know, and tight and tailored like Prince. He was dressed to impress. Yeah. You know, I was like, Damn. Um, one thing about him, he uh, he wore suspenders with like boxing trunks. Yeah. And and boxing boxing shoes. You know the kind of high lace up boxing shoes. That that's what he wore um, back in the beginning. Um, and he played drum. He held this stick. It was interesting because he would hold this one stick in his right hand this way. And then the other one, he would throw it through his fingers and he played like this. Um, and that was Proper the first way. time I'd ever seen a drummer actually do that. Yeah, um, yeah it was interesting. It was yeah. very interesting. Very tragic when he lost his arm. Um, 
But what a what a story! My God, yep. man, talk about coming yeah. back. Yeah, and uh, Rick always held his left. He held it like this, exactly, like you would hold a fork and not like that. Yeah, actually yeah. He held it like a trained drummer, which is surprising right. considering what he was fifteen when he joined the band. <laughs> fifteen. Yeah. His we used to call that. Him off. We used to call it classically trained drumming. That would be like your yeah. classic training. Like yeah, when you, if you learned it like a high school grit. band, you had to learn to do your sticks yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, it was funny when uh, Tommy Lee went back to college. Remember that whole thing back on TV yep. a couple of decades yeah. ago? Uh, that was his biggest flipping struggle uh, yeah. was reading drum lines and holding the sticks correctly. Yeah, anyway. It's funny. Yeah, it's guitar man. 45 mentioned neil peart played he played that way he did a buddy rich yep. tribute so he played the whole actually which, one, which he basically taught himself how to play drums again he had right. to relearn how to play right. drums because he's like i've been doing it wrong all right. these years and it, but, people like neil you're pretty good you yeah. know you're pretty good neil he's like no i'm not i'm doing it all wrong and i gotta relearn yeah and one, then he and showed up for the cool. next rush tour and getty and alex were like jesus I think there was one easy. album. I don't it know if it was Match Grip. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if it was Vapor Trails or one of the other albums. He played the whole thing traditional grip, you know, when they recorded it. So yeah. it's just because yeah. he wanted to get back into it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to ask one of you guys this, but I'll ask Tommy this. Um, so after Steve passed, what's your take on? Viv Campbell playing all those parts all these years. I love Vivian Campbell. So, you know, I'm all for it. I mean, I'm a huge Dio fan, so. Hey, Tommy, what was the year that Leopard toured with uh, Dio? And, mm -hmm. uh, and they spent... They spent all that time together, Colin and Campbell. They became very good friends, I believe. And right. I, I remember watching a, a thing on YouTube that Vivian Campbell was talking about it. And, you know, that's when his guitar style changed. He went on, They went on tour with Def Leppard, and he came out, he played guitar completely different. And I personally miss the old Vivian. Mm. There's something about the – there was this ratty nastiness to his licks that – were very appealing to me. Well, I, I'd say that's isn't that the one drawback is we lost Vivian Campbell as a rock great rock guitar player in many ways because I'm he's not the only one that knows you, right, Ben. <laughs> he's Tommy Thayer in many ways. Like yes. he's playing a part, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. And he's playing it well, and you know, I love Vivian, um, but like I said earlier, I gave up on the band after Steve passed. And I think part of it was whatever the hell when the one of the first songs they released off the next album was, oh, I can't get the rock out of here or whatever the hell that. Hmm. All I remember is Joel was rapping about having, you know, his mom's yelling at him. And he's got to clean up his room. I'm like, dude, you're 40. Like, <laughs> what, what in the actual, you know, because I think I was still in high school and I was like, no, no, this is you're just selling to the teeny bopper crowd. You're sold out in that respect. And then, of course, then it was nothing but, have you ever, you know, whatever, you know, violet of the week. And I was like, nope. And they're like, we got a new guy. I'm like, that's great. Who do you play with? Oh, Dio. All right, sure. Seems a little heavy for fit. Then you hear him play. I'm like, he doesn't sound like Vivian Campbell that I know. But okay. Plays the part well. Yeah. Very I, cool. Yeah, I prefer very older cool. older Vivian playing, too. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they they could have got a professional sideman, you know, or you know, find I don't know, like somebody that was a free agent and make music with that person. I, the smart thing would be able to find a guitar player that's also a songwriter, because that was the biggest problem was they lost. You know, you know, they say they all write the songs, but I'm thinking Steve must have brought the majority Steve of the Mark cool was, stuff to the table. He wrote 90 primary writers, yeah. The lyricists. Yeah, because you know writers. you got to have that root riff, right? He wrote 90 percent like, of them, man. Phil yeah, Collins yeah. can sprinkle his awesome Phil Collins all over it, and that's great. But you got to have that whatever <laughs> awesome. that is. Phil Collins. <laughs> hey, Phil it's true. we get to yeah. make up words around here. Phil Collins. 
I don't know. That's all good, yeah. dude. Hey, KXM <laughs> Rock is now. Like I say, I, I'm clearly biased on it. You know, I love Steve, and Steve's great. You know, yeah. he doesn't get enough. He doesn't get enough love. No, I yeah. think you know he's totally forgotten. And like say, like you're, like you remember growing up, like these are the biggest albums of all time, and it's like Dark Side of the Moon, Pyromania, Back in Black, yeah. you know, and those are the big three. And then Hysteria comes out, and it's like. It's added right to the Mount Rushmore. I'm like, they got two slots on Mount Rushmore. And then we That's don't a, talk I mean, about that guy because they weren't quite heavy enough because they kind of got poppy on the last album. Like, well, everybody was, bought it. It was you know? one of those. It's another gone too soon moment. You know, if he had, you know, who knows? He'd be, who knows where he would be today? I mean, I'm sure he'd still be with Def Leppard because they're still touring, but. Man. It was interesting that that was brought. Uh, Phil Collins was asked that, and you know, like they asked you about solo albums first. He goes, "Oh yeah, we all would have done solo albums." I'm like, "But you guys didn't really." Right. And right. he's gone, so you're more likely to do one. So okay, but yeah. he thought Steve would have got into movie soundtracks because he very much enjoyed doing the smell stuff. Mm -hmm. And you think like Gods of War and all that layering and. Yeah, you know, if right. that's the way he was headed, because that was his latest thing. That was by far the newest track that they put on that album. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. the way he would go, or you know, yeah. yeah, it's hard to say because again, prior to that, they never. Although I think a part of it is because they're so busy that these guys never appeared on other people's stuff, right? You know, because by that time we we didn't see a lot of that. That was the first, you know, the the late 70s into the 80s where we just didn't have guest appearances for whatever reason i don't i guess it's a label thing as much as anything else but hmm. you know unless you're part of the family you're not appearing on an album true unless it's uncredited interesting yeah. um i wish there was more of that <laughs> i hear you there bill I said, make me look like Haas. That's what I said. Cool. There you go. I think Pete, by the time Mutt came in, he was already on the way out anyway. And, um, you know, so I, I, I guess it was good timing all mm -hmm. the way around. Well, and that's it. Like, yeah. And if, if we're looking at like, would if Steve, you know, if he had gotten sober, would he've still been able to play? And that's a big if, I think, because I always thought Steve was incredibly shy um, and very, uh, you know, which a lot of guitar players are very fragile ego, really, when it comes to their playing. Like, um, I know, Charles, you witnessed it firsthand uh, when you're hanging out with friends that are on that verge of making it in a very tough market of LA. And they're like, am I good enough? You know, they, they, oh, I suck as a player because they see this guy playing at the whiskey one night and this and that, you know, because it was looked at as a competition. competition I, I don't know. Fierce. Yeah, no, it's hard, it man. Fierce. It was brutal. Yeah. It's tough. You know, it was brutal, man. I, yeah. I think, though, irregardless, uh, I think he would have just become a recluse, yeah. if anything. I, I don't think it really matters, though, to what you were saying to, to Charles. And if, if you're good enough to make it or not, I really just don't, the older I get, don't think it makes a difference if you're the best this, the best that. It's no. It's a song. It really is. You're absolutely right. Yeah, if, you don't have a, if you don't have a good song, I really just don't give a damn. <laughs> like There was no know. single, like, this guy's the best guitar player, so we're all going to follow him. No, man, it's about the flavor. It's about the song. The song. Like for me, it's with, about you songs, know. man. Songs are what bring people in. Yeah. Um, that's why right. bands are magical. Yeah. Well, and and nobody really is. played that's like one. Steve. He was, he, it was like there was a lot of classical in his playing, yeah. but you didn't notice it. You know, like you notice it with Randy Rhodes, you notice 100%. it with Melanstein. Yep. Yeah. You don't notice it with Steve because he incorporated it similar the way uh, Jimmy Page did, you know, because he took that Jimmy Page influence. And it's like, well, how can I use a classical scale in a blues setting, mm -hmm. which is rock, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. mm -hmm. he figured yeah. out, okay, well, you don't play all the notes in the scale, leave a couple of them out. Mm -hmm. 
you know, leave out those obvious classical notes. I don't know what those notes are. I never learned those ones. Tom knows them. He you see him. He's being quiet because he knows them. He doesn't want to look like a nerd, so he won't say with them. But he went to school, so he I know he's at least seen them written out. But he was consistent too. Steve <laughs> Clark is very consistent all through his playing, yep. and that's that makes a huge deal. You know, you don't want yeah. to be all over the freaking place playing and oh, he sounds like crap tonight. He brought it every time. Same, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. Well. And but likely while drunk, <laughs> you know, as we found out. You know, that's actually impressive. He played a Les Paul at his knees, matching Phil Collin, who was well, yeah, he was still pretty drunk too. Come to think of it, he, I don't think he got sober till after the stereo tour. Never saw him do a bad show. Yeah, not like even close, not even yeah, close. Like, I don't, always first class, stellar. Out and I say point. drunk, I say drunk by my standards, but yeah, for them, it was yeah. okay, as we had discussed off air. Like, yeah. my God, Steve Clark could hold his alcohol to the point where he would get alcohol poisoning before he would pass out. Um, wow. You know, I, things I noticed there, uh, there were a lot of different, um, different kinds of uh, musicians in the clubs. And there were musicians who were alcoholics. And we're drug addicts, blatantly. Yep. Um, but they were what they were. And some of those alcoholic drug addicts were some of the, the what you can, would consider the best. They just were. Yeah, but and then there were hear about Steve friends. having tremors in the morning until he had went down to the pub and had two or three shots to get Thank rid of you. the tremor. That and, and it's just reality. You know, it's sad, but we'll but use as temporary, but that's a full on alcoholic because yeah, yeah. they get the DTs from detoxing themselves. So, like I say, who else can drink to the point of alcohol poisoning and be sober enough to go, Hey, Charles, I don't feel so good? Because usually that guy's passed out hours earlier and then we find them, you know, which unfortunately was the end result. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah like some of the hearing some of the numbers on his hospital admittances. I was shocked, but then not shocked in a sense because, uh, you know, like artists generally have some kind of mental health issue and we self-medicate and you build up tolerance and, and I can go for a bunch more ands and the rock stars. and Very interesting, Ben. Uh, just a, a positive note on this topic, real positive mm -hmm. note. The rockers who had the issues – we're just as entertaining to the public for the most part, but behind the scenes, how they interacted with their people and their, their family, their band, their group. Right. Very dysfunctional mm -hmm. uh, in, in an obvious way. Uh, and the guys who were serious and took it seriously were uh, more embraced by people in the industry. Period. So um, that's why you would have that handler like a lot of for lack of yeah. better term like yeah. that trusted it could be a best friend from childhood it could be yeah. you know a family member yeah who is well, that go-between that allows them to have a successful career in the music business yeah. Yeah. and not be just playing on a street corner you know doing it regardless but i yeah but Steve did have a um chemical imbalance that's his wife did say that after he had passed it well, you know Jesus. so he if he, we didn't tony we'd be able to hold day jobs and function in life and get haircuts and wear ties and all that bs yeah. and yo know, and gladly suck up corporate plasticity because it's all plastic it's all disposable buying into the big machine that not to sound conspiratorial or anything but yeah you know i <laughs> you know, so much like we like to not quite, you know, you you walk close to the path to conform, but you're you, you're really trying to make your own way in some way, shape, or form, in that artistic yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, T, you, get, you get any new stuff, T, this week? Yeah, I got a cool. couple new stuff. What you get? I'm hearing my, uh, I'm hearing the music. I'm yeah, we should. The music. I think it's we, we should probably think this. about. Uh, we should probably think I'm about finding a music. challenger for you. Ooh. So. All right, so wah, 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 we wah. are uh, we're about an hour and ten minutes in. We are. Yeah, 
Um, Hour nine thirty six. Who wants to play some ten shot rock and roll mm-hmm. trivia? I would, but I'm not eligible. Against me. I don't think I could beat Tony anyways. I don't and know, man. You freeze according up According to Sandra, she says that there are ten Def Leppard questions. I kind of like that, Tony. I like that it's a Def Leppard show with Def Leppard questions. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Man. Right. And I'm wondering how many of those questions have already been answered just in our chit chat, and we That's, don't even see? know it. But that's the good thing about it. That's the good thing about it, Ben. Sometimes we tease the answers. Don't give our secrets away, Ben. You know we're not supposed to give our secrets away. We just tell tell the answers. Come on, Brendan. You've watched my channel. This is the first time I've known anything in years. So (laughs) I'm relishing the moment. I studied for that. I studied more for this show than I've ever done for one of my own. Eight (laughs) minutes, 13 seconds. Say what? <laughs> okay. Rewind. Rewind. Right. No. All right. So so we gotta find us a challenger. So type in the chat me if you want to play. How's that? <laughs> Ooh, tough one. Tough <laughs> one. Really tough one tonight. So who'd you uh, say you wanted to play B? Yeah, come uh, on. I, somebody somebody better say it, otherwise I'll I have think to take Sal wanted and nobody to play. wants to see that. Sal and Ed, I think. Thanks, Keith. Play. Thank you. All right. Uh, we, nice. we have to have a uh, really good internet connection. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Ed wants to play. Ed's All right. Good. Ed's in. There so it Ed. is. Cool. All right. So, cool. so, Ed, when you get in here, turn off your YouTube, and, and we'll talk to you for a couple of seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll vet you, and we'll let you know if you can play. <laughs> All right, so, so Sandra doesn't have a coronary when we're playing. <laughs> Very first cool. of all, I, I have a coronary. All right, first of all, <laughs> yes, we I are. I should. I'm gonna. Sorry. I'm gonna no, send no, Ed no a link. I made it. That's all that matters. Ed, <clears throat> there's a link in the chat for you. Okay. Click on it, but cut your YouTube off. Thank you for that. So before we do the trivia, does anyone want my fingertip? No, I'm just kidding. I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, I thought you were, we're keeping to, No, I'm going to the appointment this week. I think they're going to cut it off. Oh, no, it, does, it, it doesn't do anything. Ex- they're going to poke a Greenwich Village your finger. They got my thumb. They got my thumb. Well, it's it, 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 it's it, it's just painful at this point. <sighs> see, how, see how swollen it is? Oh, Tommy. I, I, I'm so. looking away at the moment. It's okay. We'll get you one of those tips. You can be Tony Iomi. Just give him a call. I'm yeah, sure he's I, got looked, a couple. I looked into it already, man. Like, he's probably got a couple. Be... Yeah, it's it's not cheap, but you know what you do. Like that. You know what you, you can do. You can print you one. That's what you yeah, do. Yeah, I'll print. I'll print you one. But I could do well, that. This... But you can get one that that vibrates, so you can put it on the string. You can do well, really cool. But you can get ones that Ebo. feel they have like a sensitivity as much as you can, finger, yeah. like a real finger. It transfers the vibration through yeah, to the. We're sorry. Hey, as long as it lights about. up like ET, I'll be happy, buddy. We're sorry. We're joking you about your finger. Too. Though, but, you know. oh, right. That's all we do. I don't care. I know, but you know, I know you wanted to try to keep it, but you know. No, I it's, just it's my, underneath your head. I want my pre getting hey. sick finger. Hey, right? there it is, bro. Can that can will they appreciate your fingers, man, when you have them? Will they save it and can you like put it in a jar or something? Maybe? That's what I'm gonna where, ask them if I can where, pickle it. Where it's gonna it have it in an amulet. Oh, yeah. What's that? What's that bar? Where is that bar where you can have that drink with <laughs> There's the not too much of it left. I mean, it's basically that, uh, a, it's, oh, you're talking, yeah, you're talking the salty only, toe. Isn't that only your the area? Product, so. near well, kind of. It's Canada? it's like 2,500 miles north and uh, west. West. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's uh, oh, oh, Dawson City. It's in, Dawson is City. It not, is it not in Canada? Or it's in the states. Oh, it's in Canada, but it's oh. like it's like go to Alaska and turn right. Like it's oh, okay. next to Alaska. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. North, uh, my buddy Rich, he, he drank in that bar. He's like, uh, you'll never guess where work sent me. I'm like, I have nowhere idea. He's like Dawson City. I'm like, holy no crap! Way. How cool is that? Yeah. Dawson. Suck the, the toe. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, think I was headed to uh, some day. We were both at the airport, but he was at a different terminal. 
The toe thing is yes. so gross. So. <laughs> it's like, I'm going north. I'm going north. Bring him in. What Bring happened? My, uh, there there he is. Hold on, Ed. Ed, what's going on, brother? Hey, Ed. Ed. Hey, guys. Nice you, bro. Hey, hey there he is. <laughs> Ed can hear us. We can hear. I can't Ed. hear you in the headphones, but I'll 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 do it the other way. You can't. Oh, okay. Ed, welcome. How you doing, Hi. dude? Good. Good. How are you guys? Good, Good man. man. Good. There's no delay. <laughs> oh, well, that's 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 one two. Yeah, we're good. Can you hear? Me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Can you? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. That's all that matters. That's all that's that matters. What? what? <laughs> Put everything else out of your mind. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Already? Okay. No, no, not yet. Yeah, you got to stop it, B. Oh, I did. I, yeah. I stopped. Tony's got to leave. Got... <laughs> yeah, All right. Tony got. I'm going to go. stand on my end of Tony. Hold on. <laughs> Here we Tony. go. All right. I'm good. Tony, I don't, go, dude. Go away. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So I'm going to split. Sandra's going to. Explain everything to you, and I'm gonna take my phone with me. She'll text me when she's ready for me to come back. All right. Don't right. text me anything decent, Tony. Okay. Hey, bye. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. You know the rules, Ed. Sandra will explain them to you. Yeah, I know them. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, make sure YouTube is off. It's off. I don't, um, I don't know the rules. I'd like to know the yeah. rules, Sandra, if you don't mind. If yeah, as long as they don't take more than fourteen minutes. Okay, okay. Here we here we go, Ben. Just listen. Thank ben. you. Ed, you will have one minute and one minute only to answer ten general knowledge or well tonight ten definite questions. questions as quickly and as accurately as you can. Keep in mind you only have two to three seconds to answer each question. The time starts after I ask the first question. You can pass, and if there's time at the end, we'll go back to that question. You can try to answer it. Once we're done, Brendan's going to tally it up. Tea Cake's going to come in, and he's going to try to beat your number. He answers the same 10 questions in the same amount of time. And um, if you beat him, you get a prize. If you tie him, okay. I think you get a prize. And in the strange event that you both pass and miss the same question, we're going to throw it to the chat for a random winner this time. Oh, okay. Excellent. Excellent. Not Are good. you ready? Yes. All right. I'm not. Hang on a second. <laughs> <sighs> Breathe. Get it all in. Here we go. Question number one. Who was the original drummer for Def Leppard? Yes. Where did Def Leppard perform their first gig? Sheffield, England. No. Question three. What is Rick Savage's nickname? Oh, my God. Question, question four. In what year did Rick Allen join the band full-time? 1976. No. Five. What was the first single released by Def Leppard? Uh, Rock on America? No. Question six. What year was On Through the Night released? 1979? No. Question seven. What year was High and Dry released? 1980. No. Who was fired from the band in 1982? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. I don't know. Zero. Do we give them the last two? Yeah. I was going to yep. say, I would only have yeah, got one of these so far. Okay. Yeah, Question, we'll, we'll nine. Question, Question nine. Question nine. The song Die Hard the Hunter is off which album? High and dry? No. And 10, <laughs> which, which arm did drummer Rick Allen lose? The right. No. Oh, oh. My man. Oh, goose egg. You got a goose egg, man. All right. well, I, well, I thought I'd give it a shot. You know, I, that was I, a, that's a hard I know, one. I know general rock trivia, but I don't know. Dude, that those much. questions didn't just fall out of the sky. Those are great questions. I was going to say, uh, uh, Sandra, Sandra, I can great. only get one those are great. Those. Thank you. those are great. <laughs> and yeah, so I was thinking, like, as a guest, I could I help Ed? And I, I couldn't have been. There. I might have gotten two. I think. Wow, that's about it. Yeah. So I very didn't good, do very, very good well. Either. Yeah, let, let's hope Tony gets a zero. That's a good chance. All right, I just. <laughs> <laughs> 
Although the Andre was, was the you, it's, it's all good. good. <laughs> it's all, all right. good, man. Yeah, it's all fun, man. It's all good fun. You see how well Tony does it. Yeah, let's see. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, all right. yeah. He could only guess three. Huh? TK? Keep keep any answers to yourself. Don't don't okay. don't I'm not saying write anything it. in the chat. Don't blurt anything out. Yes, no, nothing in the chat, please. Nothing in the chat, please. I'm trying to be good. <laughs> Tony, you got a tough one, buddy. You got a tough uh, one coming up. So he, tough, man. He got zero. <laughs> he got hey, zero. You should have told him I got eight. <laughs> He got zero. He got Ooh. all ten wrong. He got yep. all ten wrong. He got all ten wrong, but that's yeah. okay because I'm predicting Tony's going to get four. He still has a shot here, though. He yeah. does. He, he does. Make yeah. Tony might blow. We don't know. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking Tony's going to cruise to a good four, but that's because I have complete faith in Tony. Although well, I, I don't know what he was doing off camera, so it might be a two. I guess he's I've, get I'm tied twice, twice already. Tied so twice. I'm twice zero, long. zero, and two. I'm going to oh, say. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going for a point seven. Ah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, all ready? right. I guess I'm ready. Yeah. Ready, T. Okay. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Question number one Who was the original drummer for Def Leppard? Rick Allen? No. Two. Where did Def Leppard perform their first gig? Uh, Sheffield. No. Three. What is Rick Savage's nickname? Sav. Yes. Four. And what year did Rick Allen join the band full time? Uh, nineteen seventy-eight. Yes. What? Well, five. What was the first single released by Def Leppard? Bringing on the heartbreak? No. Uh, what year was On Through the Night released? 1978. No. What year was High and Dry released? 1981. Yes. Number eight. Who was fired from the band in 1982? Pete uh -oh. Willis. Yes. The song Die Hard the Hunter is on which album? Uh, Adrenalize. No. And number 10, which arm did drummer Rick Allen lose? His left. Yes. Wow. Good job, Tony. Very Tony well got five. five. Tony got I five. Got five. Tony got yeah. five. Hey, I won. Very well that was done. You exceeded my expectations, Tony. Hey, Ed, you Me know too. what this means? That What's means that? you gotta come back, brother. That's what <laughs> oh, I am. Means. I am. Hey, this is fun. Win, lose, yeah. indifferent. Okay. This is fun, brother. Fun. Here we go. Question number one. Yeah. And now, Chad, if, if you want to go along, you can. Who was the original drummer for Def Lover? The answer is Tony Kenning. Never remember uh, that. Never knew that. Where nope, did Def Leppard perform their first gig? We were looking in a bar. For, we were looking for Westfield School. Uh, oh, not mm. even a bar. Damn it. Wow. Rick Savage is going to go with a general answer, Sandra. It, no, not even a bar. A school. Nope. They were young. Uh, what year did Rick Allen join the band full time? November 28th, 1978. But we were just looking for 78, would have been fine. Uh, what was the first single released by Def Leppard? Wasted, 1979. Oh, what year was on through the night released? March 14th, 1980. I knew what that. year was High and Dry release? That was in 1981. That was 81. Yep. Pete Willis was fired from the band in 1982. Yep. Die Hard the Hunter is on Pyromania. Ah. And Rick Allen did lose his left arm. Yep. Wow. Good questions. Great questions. Great wow. questions, yeah, Sandra. Good, good trivia. Think kick that timer out of there. Um. Very cool. And cool. we have. <laughs> Let me take it out of there. What happened? Yeah. Apparently, yeah, yeah. Ed's on for one more minute. <laughs> I got I'll, I got rid of it. I'll I try to get next week. No, I got rid of it so Sandra doesn't kick me out That's again. So <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much for playing, yeah. Ed. 
All and right, guys. It was fun. I'll try it again next week. You Maybe. rock, Ed. We love you, bro. And All right. Take care, guys. Oh, All right. So he'll cut his his YouTube back on. We'll send right. Ed a nice prize pack with sure. all of our stuff in it. Uh, I thought I knew the band. There you go, Ed. I had Pete Willis in left arm. That's it. That's all I had. That's Pete what Willis I had. Left arm. That's what I had. had. Those two. Three of them yeah. really correct. Yeah. Wow. I would. Yeah. We got two. I'm still undefeated. <laughs> I knew that the first one was 1980. Oh, and they used Earlier today, I learned Sab. Sorry. I might have had three if I remembered that. See, I, I can I barely remember Sab. And you know, was, most of that stuff you guys talked about. Yeah. yeah. You, hit, you hit on a lot of those questions, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, well. I would have said, I would have said, but that's curly. good in a sense, right? Because I would have said curly. Yes. You know, that would be like, I never hey, heard of get these the first drummer? No, but we accidentally did. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Educating the chat as well as ourselves, apparently, without right. even knowing it. That's absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Story of my life. Um, so, Ed, there's an email address down below. If you can email us your stuff. I know you've won before, but so it's at the top, and I don't ha have to look through a big pile. Thank you for that. And we'll send you a nice prize pack. But we are... Consolation we are, prize? This is like the price is right. My yeah. cheeks didn't tell me this. Well, That's how we roll, baby. I didn't so, know there was consolation prizes from the you know oh, yeah. the associate sponsors and such, right? Sure, like, sure. Yeah. And, Ed, when these things come in, um, I just was in contact with... Um, Oops. Greg at where is his stuff at? This guy right here. That's awesome. Greg at Legend Picks. Um, and yeah, I gotta talk to him today. And we are getting some show me your pick guitar picks Very for cool. the show. Um, and this is important. They will be. If you show me your pick, I'll show you mine. Unboxed here in a a quick minute <laughs> or two down the road. He showed me his butt cheeks. <laughs> I showed you my butt cheeks. Don't touch. It's me. not my fault, Ossifer. She showed me her butt cheeks. <laughs> uh, I'll aim um, it up. There we are. Well, since everybody else is, I'll just. I'll do mine. Right on. Where off the bird said fruitcake Tony on it. I'm on a um head to oblige. I'm All right. Change. Three little runner and sneak back up. TK has huh? got new to show them. Yeah, what you got, man? There you go. Hey, cool. that's not proper. <sighs> Nice. Watch your profanity. Watch your profanity. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Fender, Fender mediums. Hmm. When you're going to go with the Fenders, you're going to go with the mediums. Nice. You sound like the guy from Family Guy, like the, the one guy. <laughs> we gotta go with the Fender Mediums, Peter. Yeah, Peter, you want to go like, with the Fender Mediums? This is like this is like the uh, preview episodes for oh, in upcoming upcoming episodes. Yeah, we may or may not feature this artist yeah. and this artist. Nice, Glenn Hughes. Nice, a lot. What's it name? Dude's birthday. Such a kind soul and. Speaking of addiction and come through the other side, Charles, mm -hmm. Glenn Hughes. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. Oh, some uh, some guys make it. Look yep. at the shape. That's a this different, different looking shape. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like yours. It's like a hybrid. But... What do they call it? A chubby? I, I, like was, chubby say, I was thinking I pregnant. Chubby. I don't know. If they I would do. call that a chubby. 
Would you call that a chubby? Well, you give me one of them do, uh, Hey, Tommy, do uh, I don't really dig that shape of pick personally, but oh, the guys Tommy who Manuel. play like jazz, like uh, like your uh, like your Alan Hallsworth and stuff, do they like those oh, kind of picks? Sense. Some of those guys like those Dude, this real makes, thick, two, three, but, anywhere from one and a half to three but millimeters. That, this or makes sense because Tommy Emmanuel freaking attacks the hell out of his strings. Yeah, right? yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. There's that's something the about it. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, man. Um, all I right. All for- yes. Yes. Go on. Uh oh, he's breaking out the tin. That means yeah, he's this is going to be something I think cool. It's also yeah, conditioning because I know when I was playing. A lot I've been more. hesitant to ask because I I I don't know. Like I don't know. Like whenever I come on this channel, I don't know. At least once I'm going. What in the actual? Wow. Yeah. So yep. so they're 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 for for you collectors watching. There may be one or two that you might or one that you might have seen or one that you might actually have but there there's one or two that you might not um but let's start nice nice see i you can tell that's old because it's it's not even centered you know like right. you're just happy to have your name on it it right. Those are the ones with like the single letter, dink, 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 yeah, like the Flintstones, that, like that. That is amazing. The dinosaur did it. I, I was going to ask because again, like the Enigma known as Steve Clark, he passed away so early. Like, right? You're not sure if these exist, you know. Let alone mm-hmm. if they're. I don't know. It'd be like finding an Elvis guitar pick, butt cheeks. I just assume it's a fake. You know? Yeah. Like well, I don't got know. An Elvis had, guitar pick. I'm did sure he, he have did. one? Did he have one? I don't, I don't know. know. That's know. the thing. He probably that's a metal. Oh, that's a metal. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's like awesome. It. Very nice. Yes. Now, is that a thicker one or a thinner one, Tony? That's metal. That's it's metal. So that's a stainless metal. steel. Is that what that yeah. is? Yeah, it's, it's a piece of metal. Yeah, it said, looks pretty like thin, that. but I'm just wondering if that's more of a fill or a Steve. It uh, might be aluminium. <laughs> it could be. It's well, a bit here's of an alloy. the thing about that, though. This right, is of the right. same era, and it's a medium. And this, this is thin. Okay. And tell. it's the same. It's going to pop down the shelf a bit. So Maybe they'll give the answer on the day. A couple of different gauges. <laughs> but these, <laughs> these two... Um, go back to one acoustic, one electric. (laughs) It's a purple, it's a purple one, depth leopard purple. Oh, is it pink? The yellow Mm -hmm. ones were from Hysteria. Now, this one and the next one are from Pyromania. Okay, now, Charles, I have a question for you. The logo and specifically the spelling for Def Leppard. Do you know how that came about? No, yeah, they I started, don't. They started with a D. So they oh. started with standard spelling of both Def and Leopard. Yes, I, I and I heard something about this, but go ahead and yeah, tell the story. For the first it. show or two, they went with Def Leppard and standard spelling, and then they were told that sounds too punk rock. So Steve said, "Well, let's just Led Zeppelin up the logo." And then I'm like, and then as soon as I heard that, I'm like, "That makes so much sense." That's perfect. Boom! I'm like, it was wow, like I was today years old story, when I found this out. I thought somebody got mad about the deaf or the leopard, you know, but I guess not. You know, you hear yeah, different rumors, but yeah. no, that's I cool. I like that, that was uh, uh, Steve had told that to Phil. I think that's nice. where I heard that. It was at one of the Phil interviews. That's 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 cool. I remember hearing the name Def Leppard, Leopard. and the very first time I heard it, I thought that was the most brilliant name for a rock band. Just brilliant. Yeah. I, I remember, the re, that's why I was wondering when uh, I knew Hysteria came out in 87, because that was right before I went into eighth grade, and I had my mm-hmm. Hysteria cassette yeah. confiscated. Yeah. And, you know, like, we're talking, you know, fall of 87, rural, small town, Substitute teacher who's, you know, like what you would think, a substitute, you know, who's been substitute since the 60s, 
what's a deaf leopard? Oh, so not a not. I'm a like, hot. it's a band. She's like, I'm sure it's complete noise with a name like that. I was like, no, they're pretty good. Actually, <laughs> yeah. They're really catchy. Definitely. <laughs> You're going to hear them everywhere within a year. Did she confiscate your player? Uh, for the day. And then I petitioned uh, the principal because I was that type. I was like, no, that's theft. I wasn't playing it. It was sitting on my desk. Wow. I just realized that substitute teachers are just the same in Canada as they are down here, brother. <laughs> I yeah. had a very similar it experience. Same, put it this way. It was, so, it was enough rural, Charles, that... Yeah. The cliche stuff you hear about the 60s and the 70s was still happening in the 80s where you figure like in primary school, you would line up separate boys and girls, you know, mm -hmm. in the first, say, through grade three or four. Yeah. And teach, substitute teachers would actually say to me, why don't you stand in line with the girls with your hair that long? Oh, man, oh, man, let them try to get away with that today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I, yeah, yeah, I also got in trouble because I kind of told them where to go. Excellent. <laughs> you know, we That's have, what I like about you, using four letter words. The similarity we have. Yeah, I would have the still same thing. The office, yeah, probably I did. Knew, yeah. I knew. I'm like, please call my parents. Please call, call, them. call them. Like, I call them a hoser. I dare you. I, I called them a hoser and said, "Get out of here, man." And it was the yeah. only time, Charles. It was the only time my father would show up at school. <laughs> my mother would show up for anything else, you know. But my dad, full on musician at that time, and yeah. you know. We, yeah. And he just walk in, what in the actual fuck, you know, and he's like, there's no way in hell, blah, 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 you know, and that yeah. teacher wouldn't be a substitute in my grade anymore. Excellent. Excellent. <sighs> yeah, I'm like, that, no, like, I'm like, my dad's like, no, that's bull. Like, that's the fortunate thing of coming out of the first generation where your parents are hippies. Sure, mm -hmm. we're Gen X and we learn to trust nothing and expect nothing. But on the other hand, our parents were like, no, if you want to grow your hair long, go for it. There you go, brother. Just you know go. that you're you have it's more upkeep. You know, you're gonna have to keep it clean and blah blah blah. I'm like, all right, but now mm. I you know, and we're not talking long hair like now. We're talking not much longer than yours, Charles. You know, well, that would have been long hair though back in those days because everyone yeah. wore a buzz yeah, cut. Yeah, because we're crazy. talking like 82, 83 in rural area. Come on, you know, they're already dad, 10 years behind. When my dad told me it was time to get a haircut. It was brutal because I knew that all my hair was going to be gone. And it was just something that I never got used to. I used to just hate it until I grew out of it and got to the point where I could say no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah, seeing my dad walk down a school hall looking like his Whalen Jennings ass with his cowboy boots and Western hat. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. So yeah, we got here. He wore a stage four 24 7. He was that so, guy. You say we got a problem here. Yeah, kind of. Dave is like, why are you talking with a southern accent? We're in Canada. I don't know. <laughs> you said Waylon Jennings, and stuff. Oh, no, my, my dad does though. He he's, he picks up that southern accent. Maybe he, he did talk years because it was part accent. of playing the part. He was playing outlaw country, and see, he lived Waylon the part. Jennings was like a method great actor. country music, man. Oh, yeah. Great country music. As good as which was new was. around here because everyone's still playing the Hanks. That's all you heard was Hank Senior and Hank Snow. Everywhere, yeah. and they're like, No, we're playing Waylon and Willie, and sure. we're gonna, and we might even throw in a Chuck Berry tune or That's the Uberly Brothers. Timeless. It's timeless, yeah, yeah, man. But yeah, <laughs> so apparently, I'm gonna have to take this week's allowance and talk to Tony off air because somebody needs a Steve Clark pick in his life, and Tony has more than one. I'm just I'm saying it, I'm saying it live on man. air. I don't know what it's going to cost me, Charles. I don't know. You're going back but, in the vault. Yeah, you know, Tony's going to say he's, he's like, you're going to have to make me smile. I'm like, dang it, because <laughs> for the man that has everything, for me to find the perfect got frame, this covered back. Yeah, he's it's already full centered, going back into the vault and and sealed. There you go. Oh uh, boy. There you go. We'll see, Ben. Yeah, well, I have to figure something out. I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, yeah, cost you, you less. Know, I have to send him a guitar or something. I don't <laughs> right. Know. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna cost yeah. you. A... I know, I know. But now that I know that they're out there, but it's Paul. like, you know, it's like you all of a sudden hearing, "Oh, Zeppelin's back together." Wait, what? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you know, like I get to see them all of a sudden. No, that, that's what I'm. What, I didn't think these things were out there. You know, and Tony's like, "Oh yeah, he got those it yellow hysteria ones." Um, you see them here and there in the marketplace but they're 
they're a, a, a few hun hundred dollars, but the the other two, the purple ones, you never see those. No, no, no. no. You know. Yeah. Um, very cool, man. Very nice. So, very um, nice. But speaking of gear, long. here's the question, fellas. Do you know where all of Steve Clark's guitars are? No. Someone's got them. Maybe Phil? His sister has them. Okay. Mm. Uh, last, that was literally like after he passed away, they went through all their lockers and stuff as bands have. Usually you have one in North America, one in Europe, maybe one in Asia even. I wouldn't doubt after the Hysteria Tour, they were at yeah. that point where you would have at least three complete rigs. Cheaper to do that. Uh, station. So they gathered up all that stuff uh, and gave them to his sister. Now, out of that, maybe she parted with a couple to other family members, but as far as I know, none were ever put out for auction or sale. However, at one point, they were clearing out another Def Leppard locker, and apparently Joe Elliott found one of Steve's Les Pauls and hid it, and then they gave it to Phil Collin on his 40th birthday. Oh, wow, mm. cool. Wow. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very and nice. Phil Collin also has, I guess you, it's a guitar from Steve. Like apparently they wanted a reason to spend money, so they decided to buy each other guitars. And so they're in New York on what would be Forty Eighth Street with all the shops, mm. and they're going around, and they couldn't really find what they wanted. And then Sam Ash called them and said, "We found two in the attic or something that were." 10 years old at that time. So there would have been like an 80 or 79 Les Pauls. Not only were they matching, serial numbers were one apart. Hmm. And so they both bought those. So they have literal, you know, matching guitars. So that was really cool. Hmm. Oh, Pops is here. That's he woke up. Awesome. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah, I'm pretty sure all of Steve's, I know, I don't know about the rest of the equipment, but the guitars are definitely all. And again, like you don't know. Do you were they? You know, was the long term plan to maybe do a museum of some kind? You know, in Sheffield. You know, mm -hmm. because I assume if that's where the family still is, or <coughs> but at some point, you know, these guitars should be out there, which would be amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. I'm starting over for Quentin in three, two. Hey, Terry. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing tonight? Quentin. So don't feel bad, Quentin. You're late, but you're not as late as Terry was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. It's good to see you, Terry. It's good to see you, Quentin. I saw Jeff K. And uh, there was somebody else. Quentin was running in, and he just pushed Terry down and ran in first. <laughs> he did. Like, like Costanza pushing people out. I see it, George Costanza. <laughs> the fire. <laughs> well, I was thinking to fire. The <laughs> metal that. works. That's yeah. who it was. Ex ex was except uh, Quentin would be running through with his pants down around his ankles. That's true. And still managed to be first out the door Catch somehow. The you, you know um, that Ben that, you, that uh, Quentin's got my initials tattooed on his wrist, right? You, As you he should. Know, we're close. <laughs> <laughs> they're not really mine, but they're the same initials. <laughs> but yeah, kind of funny. You know, we, we're bonded forever. So, so I want to ask. Excellent. I want to ask everybody in the chat of of those ten questions. If you were following along, those Def Leppard questions. Uh, type in the chat how many you think you would have got correct. Um, I only would have got two. I'm giving yeah. myself that two and a half if I remembered Sav. Yeah, I should have got six. I had and the only reason I remember it because it's a total hockey nickname, Brendan. It you know, great. like the it hockey nicknames are the most unimaginative nicknames ever. So, <laughs> like, what's his name? Uh, let's go with Sav. Okay. And if it was, if his name was Sav, it would have been like Saver because it's right. it's one syllable. You make it two. Well, yours would have been like what Phil McKnight calls you, Ben Combs. Yeah. Combs. Or Steve from Boston's always, hey, the Coomster's here. I'm like, apparently I'm the Coomster. All right. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. 
That's anything with stir at the end is good. You know? yep. Right? The bent stir, the green stir, the tea cake stir. <laughs> doesn't really flow as well as the coomster. I don't know. I think these guys are just trying to trying to make us, you know, trying to trying to say that they got a chance. T. None of these guys would have had a chance. They had uh, they had no chance. Nah. Nope. Now, now. Sour, maybe well, six. Thinking, and that's even with apparently this is because I unfortunately don't catch every episode that this was a theme based trivia to go with the show. Well, if no, you have well, random trivia. I'm sorry, folks. You don't have a heartbeat unless you have a is. Google planted in there. But it normally is we, not theme related. This right? Movie. Yeah. Well, that's, we we found this out after we went live that she said that she wrote ten Def Leppard questions. So. And it's awesome. yeah, um, so that means Tony, you got to give Sandra the furthest heads up as far as what, who, theme, trivia, you know, whatever. Like, this is what we're doing. All right, and then we're doing this, and like, I need to know a month in advance so I can research. Because man, she does her work. She does. That's how, what, I like, like it random like that. How? Hey, can I come on YouTube and shrug ten times? Because that's what I was feeling. I am not knowing. I feel like a fool. I thought maybe one or two might have been, you know, Steve Clark or, you know, but no, no, all of them. No, they're also apparently us guitar players. We pay attention to one thing in the band, yeah, because the one Pete Willis, you know, that's about it, you know. And then the the obvious, um, an arm, yeah. Which one? Dang it! Ed was flipping that coin. I heard it. And he went, is it? No. Ed, Ed knew, but he just blurted out right arm because he froze yeah. up. Because that's what happens. Yeah. You know? It happens. It's all good. I graduated in 1980 as well, but I graduated to underwear. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, that, that was fun. So... I don't. So she she writes go? the questions. These guys, um, hopefully, she? there she is. Hopefully, they're helping her write these. But yeah, so I haven't sent her one. I have <laughs> no, I haven't heard from anybody. I have uh, one that's not quite sure yet. Fun anything. fact. Oh, we're fun supposed fact to start her questions. Forty percent of the band is named Rick. This is true. Uh, boo. That's true. Boo. That's interesting. Forty <laughs> percent. Yeah. Who knew? This is true. Who knew? This Hence is true. the weak ass nickname of Sab, because clearly Alan doesn't go by Alan. He goes by Sab. Rick. Right. E -E. Three Al. Yeah. Al. Do one of you go by Richard? No. <laughs> we were talking about that on the initials. Show. Nothing cool. Dang it. Raw, yeah, <laughs> dude's birthday. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, as I said right. earlier, I talked to this fellow, and we'll have some very nice show me your pick guitar picks here soon. Oh yeah. I'm gonna have All him make you. me a knockoff Steve Clark pick. Fruitcake. One off. And he's gonna have a little fruitcake Tony logo right. You gotta use a magnifying glass to see it so it's not a complete counterfeit. But I think he could pull it off. See the question Leo asked you guys? He wants to know yeah. about Iron Maiden. Yeah. Yep. We did an Iron mm -hmm. Maiden show. Um uh I don't know. About a year ago, I guess. I was just say, it was an early show, I believe. It's yeah. on the channel. It's in the playlist. Yeah, so... we did. <laughs> we did, yeah. Um, yeah. This crew has covered a lot of territory in a, not a lot of time. Because we got sometimes you, you guys can combine artists or bands or 
<coughs> and I, I was just like, ooh. Holy shit, know. look at Sawa. Not too shabby. My goodness. Damn. That's fantastic. He he see, he's yeah, he Christopher is one. He's got the Google in the brain. Christopher, like, how in good. the world did you pull that out? My goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's that's scary. That's These a little scary. Kids are good. You do I don't want to play trivia play against are Christopher Sauer. No, 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 no. nah, he's going to kill it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I remember. Scary, yeah. Black yeah. Tooth Fox. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the yeah. level of knowledge, guys, that I'm thinking you might have to put a disclaimer with him. You say, Chris, what bands One don't you point. like? <laughs> okay. You can do trivia on those bands. Because wow. I bet he knows trivia hmm. about them, even though he doesn't like them. Oh, well, like, his like his normal Sunday sign-on in my chat. Hey, one last night's trivia. I'm like, I'm not surprised. He's a multiple winner here. Yeah, yeah he rocks. Yes. Yeah, he does yeah. his stuff. Like if, if you get like the Jeopardy Masters Edition week thing, that's him, <laughs> right? He's the returning champion. Yeah, the triumph. Yeah, you won the night I was on doing triumph. <laughs> Yeah, him and Keith Black, he does know his stuff. Yeah. Um. So let me let player. me while it's on my mind, let me talk about what is coming up on the calendar that we. I got was going to ask, but I didn't want to. In the cooker for you. Yeah. yeah. What is coming up? In the cooker. So we are gonna once again have our. Where's the Oh, where is it? Oh, dear Lord. Yes, I have it. So we're going to have our third annual interactive backstage bash. We had one for the Super Bowl. We had one before that. And this is the third one. And Memorial Day is coming up. Mm-hmm. Weather should be nice for all of us. And, you know, we're going to have a backstage bash that we're going to okay. um, call our third annual Memorial Day. I dig Show it. me your pick backstage bash barbecue bash yeah and that will take place immediately after show me your pick on saturday may 28th memorial day weekend yep and that is um i want a guitar shape two, three, four weeks away from now but so mm -hmm. the catch is <laughs> is for the next four weeks including the 28th we're gonna invite the participants to join us on the 28th after show me your pick airs Gretchen's and, bringing the potato salad. That's yeah, awesome. I love potato very salad. Very cool, Gretchen. So Chris, there will be lots to eat that night. Chris, yeah. Chris well, is the transition from the show into the after show will be the last thing we'll be talking about Dave Grohl barbecuing? Yeah. Oh, you guys have talked yes. about food this whole show. I am st I'm eating. Right now, the show's too. over. That's all I'm saying. Me too, but for other reasons, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> that will and, yeah, be... I already invited myself onto that. Right about... as well because... <laughs> If I was down in my normal vacation spot Memorial Day weekend, I would be in Charlotte Motor Speedway, and I'd be saying, "Hey, Tony, why don't you pop on over to the infield for a spell?" And he'd say, yeah. uh, "Well, we might as well, you know, Mazel, Mazel, pop on over." I'm and, six uh, miles from the speedway, Ben. And then you see, and then Charles is like, reminds me, and he's like, "Where's my invite?" I'm like, "Dang it!" I'm like, I need another wristband. I'm like, yeah, no man, problem. If I knew you were going to be at that oh. speedway, that's where I would be. All you got to do oh, yeah. is call, man, and I'll be there. And so, we, we camp right on the top of Redneck Hill, right there. I know so, what you're talking so about. So on the show that night of the back, the Memorial Day, we're going to be talking about yeah. Heavy Metal Day at the yeah. Us Festival. 
That's yep. May 28th, also at 9 p.m. Yep. And That's gonna be a that'll fun be show. episode number 99, and this will no, happen no, no, right no, after. No. Yeah. Would that be possibly the best day of hard rock music ever? I'm just throwing that out there. I was going to say this possibly. earlier in the show. Without having more artists on one bill, too. And that really needed to be there on that day, and it was Def Leppard. Yeah. Because you had it, it's Quiet Riot, because... Motley Crue, Def Leppard, yeah. and then it would have gone into a uh, Priest – so on and so forth. It, it, the interesting um, thing about that lineup too is you look at it and really you know, like names, yes, you know, looking back, but I bet you Quiet Riot wasn't making a ton of money off that gig. I don't know. But, but I, knew, I don't think anybody outside of California would know who Quiet Riot was in what 82 was that, Charles? 83. 83. So was Metal Health released yet? That's the yeah. question. Right? Yeah, it was uh it was out by that time. Okay. And they were... Because, um, you know, it's right at that were, point where even, you figure Motley Crue, yeah. even, you know... Uh, they were they were they known by that time. It. They were actually known by that time. Yeah. Um, well, the um, second the second best Canadian band, you know, played there, so... We keep it simple. Three guys. That's well, all are we going to start this again, Bryn? No. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't start it. It was Sawa. Sawa started. I swear to God, Triumph absolutely killed the US Festival. It was totally unexpected. Oh, they did. The sun was just getting ready to go down. God, it was magical. It was flipping magical. It wasn't just special. It was magical. Um, it really was. But yeah. just saying, you know, the US Festival would have been better if you just substituted a power trio out of Canada. That's what I'm he's not, saying. I'm not saying a thing, man. I got <laughs> trouble last time. Go ahead, Tim. Sorry. This is what so, I do. I come on, I no, stir the pot a little, I leave, you know. No, What's B, that? I was going to ask you, um, you, um, you said something earlier about a shovel. Yeah. I um, made a couple. I made a, I made, I made a couple of shovels. You know. And in fairness, when I first heard about this, uh, all I saw was it's what I not, thought was the edge of a fretboard and some strings because it was it just not. barely on camera. And I'm like, <sighs> did somebody leave that in an extra humid area? Like, I'm not too sure what's going on there. <laughs> and then I saw that one. That, magnificent. Might, that might not be the one we're talking about, though. Ben. Oh, then it might be a different one. Once again, right, I'm too. confused. Is it a different I, one? I, I only have so much room up here, and it was all I know, it's okay. I know. Yeah, you might not be uh, privy to this yet. Oh, Mr. I know. Mr. Ben Combs, Coomster. Yeah, oh. let let's. Um, so yeah, we got a little, uh, we got a little little snack for you. Yeah, oh. let's have have a, a a little late show snack. Um, a little, little surprise guest with a little update yes. on what's going on May nineteenth. Hang on. Do you know what's yeah. going on May 19th, Ben? May the 19th. Thursday. Maybe in another country, maybe? You That's know. a May Thursday, 19th. right? Maybe down under. Do you, you know, know what's going on on May 19th? Come on, man. I do. I do. The, maybe That's the three days no before my birthday. Night. Well, it's not that. that. So it's not the early tailgaters starting early in the parking no, lot? No, no, no. Five so days before Brian's birthday. Well, Down could it, it could it involve my favorite Aussie in the whole world, who uh, who you know may or may not have appeared in the chat? Um, who? Who would that be? Oh, that'd be the Hoss. Say, say the name. Yes, the one and only, the man, the legend, the one and only, the Hoss. Yes, big the Hoss. There he is. Uh, there he is. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey everyone, you guys are way. Way, way too sweet. The sweetest people that that I know. And uh, so, hello to everyone. Hey, Tony. Hey, Sandra. Hey, brother. Ben Coombs, the one and only. Uh, Bent Tom. How are you feeling? Fel? Hey, dude, I'm so sorry to hear about your finger just now. That is absolutely, and lots of swear words in between, awful. So, uh, yeah. brother, um, my heart goes out to you. Although I am loving your hairstyle and your face shave style because it's, you know, <laughs> 
we we could stand side by side and be. See, I, I usually have like a beanie too, but it just. Depends. I know, so that's why I wore the beanie because I thought, well, Tom will be wearing a beanie. And we, anyway, um, uh, yeah, sending yeah. hugs to you, brother, and Charles. Oh, how you, you doing, sir? Are you good? Doing well, Simon. It's good to see you, bro. It's so yeah, good to see you. Um, it's a lovely oh, surprise. I'm having a nice, quiet Sunday at home doing some laundry. Right. And, well, and I've got the big question for you, bro. Are yeah. you ready, man? That's all I want to know. Are you ready for the show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be totally ready. And you know what? It's one of those things that there's nothing a, a, uh, a freight train going through the corner hotel isn't going to stop at this time. So even if we're not ready, we'll just have to be ready. You know, it's one of those ones. I got to tell you, the, you know, that little snippet you guys put out. God, it sounds so good. I can't oh, wait. I can't wait. Yeah, we just we just recorded that at our little production rehearsal, which was at um, – Believe it or not, just a huge big farm shed at our lighting guy's place. And um, he had a little stage set up and a lighting truss. And he said, look, can I just black out some things? Uh, why don't you guys play on the stage and I'll take some I'll take some video footage and we'll do like a basic, I'll put microphones on stuff. So I just did a quick mix at home and in Pro Tools, but essentially that was our, our production rehearsal. And I thought it would be a really, it, when I saw the footage, it looked pretty good. And I couldn't believe it was in his farm shed. So I thought, look, we'll, we'll put together a little promo and people can have a taste of, of what the show is going to look like. Because the the Melbourne Guitar Show footage um, that's that's on YouTube, of course, that was in an office building because it was an expo, you know, and, it, and we had like three light cans and it was just all... Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Uh, so we wanted to we wanted to show people a bit more of what it was going to look like our, our vision for it at the Corner Hotel, you know. So thanks, Charles. It was. Have uh, you uh, have you ever played that venue before? Yeah, I have. I've played it with uh, Colin Hay from Men at Work. I've mm -hmm. played it. Mm -hmm. I've also played it with Tommy Emmanuel, and uh, it's like one of Melbourne's. It's like an 800 capacity, so I guess you would say it, it's like a, a one of Melbourne's best known rock clubs that's close to the city. Uh, but it also has other other kinds of music, of course, you know, folk and pop. And it, it's sure. one of um, Melbourne's big live music venues. And even when a lot of the other ones have been closing down and shutting over the last 10 years, the Corner Hotel just uh, um, it just is a is a mainstay, you know. And Excellent. and actually it's where it's where when at International Touring Act comes and they don't quite have the numbers to do like, you know, a. Um, a big concert hall or even bigger than that, a tennis center or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they'll do multiple shows at the corner hotel. So for example, even I remember one year, um, uh, Jeff Scott Soto was out with his band mm -hmm. and he did like two or three nights at the corner hotel. So it's one of those kind of places. That's um, yeah. We're, we're probably not going to get anywhere close to 800 in there. I don't think, but I, it'll look good. We'll be like two thirds full. I think, I think people from what I'm seeing with ha ticket buying habits here in Melbourne, People are still a little bit shy, but definitely the mood has changed. And even for us in the band, myself and Jerry and Jason and Dave, it's um, it actually feels like it's really happening this time instead of just another date in the sky. You the know? hype's getting pretty big, I know. The hype's getting big on this. The sound. Yeah, that's, Simon, that's you guys we're... are bringing Van Halen, bro. You're bringing Van Halen, dude. So, so, so harsh. You. Yeah. Oh, by, by the way, before you, before you talk, Tony, uh, what's this? Oh, you saw right. that earlier. You must recognize that. I can't quite read the writing on it. Is that Tommy? Yeah. Yeah. Tommy. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And I imagine he, um, when he plays with a pick, I mean, obviously a lot of the time he's doing finger style on an acoustic, but I imagine he plays pretty thick picks. I actually don't yeah, know, believe it or not. I toured with him for years and I never grabbed one of his picks. Um, and, uh, <laughs> You know, it, it's funny. It's such a great show that you have because it's endlessly fascinating what different picks that different players use to get their sound. And and one of the things that um, after Eddie passed, there was a lot of talk about and things came out and Dweezil Zappa was doing his podcast and, you know, you guys were doing your show uh, about that Eddie was using much thinner picks than people probably thought, you know, like 60s that were quite flexible and... Um, and I remember I thought, okay, I've got to try that. Maybe that's the secret sauce, you know. And uh, I can't do it. I just can't play. That. I can't play those any licks with a with a sixty. So I'm sticking to my. Um, I'm actually in my land room here, restringing guitars. My the pick I use is um, is like these Altex Jim Dunlop mm. ones. Nice. Yeah, like a nine a ninety. Okay, um, gotcha. Ah. Gotcha. Yeah. 
and they're pretty um there's a little bit of flex in them mm-hmm. but not they're not completely solid um but they're hard enough and point i like the point if they're pretty yeah solid. that's what i was gonna say yeah. the point's great the point's great for rock playing it's obviously not good for um funk and other things if i if i have to uh, do like a funk or a dance set or something where I'm doing like Nile Rogers kind of stuff. I'll actually use a, a softer, more flexible pick because it just glides over the strings a bit better for yeah. getting all yeah. six strings at once. Mm-hmm. But for rock stuff and um, uh, yeah, then I'll use these guys. But it's funny. I just can't, I can't play the Eddie stuff with, with what the picks Eddie used to use. It just feels too floppy for me. I feel like I'm fighting with paper, you know, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of analysis on that's one of the the secrets to the sound of his attack, you know, is that that the fact that the pick comes off like a millisecond after he actually hits the string. So, um, but even just watching your show on all the other different bands too. And I have to say, by the way, Sandra, your questions for the the quiz were awesome. Thank you. Really awesome. (laughs) Really awesome. And and Simon, it dawned on me recently that... I I do have a few men at work picks too. Do you? I do. Yeah, right, right. I actually yeah. just put up on my YouTube channel. I'd fe- someone had put up uh, someone in Brazil some footage of us uh, when I was touring with Men at Work in '96, and we did this five week tour of Brazil, and we did a lot of their big TV shows. You know, they're kind of their it. version of of Letterman or whatever. You know, their, their variety shows. Um, and some I'd even forgotten about it, but someone had found where we did like the three big hits, like Down Under, Overkill, and It's a Mistake on this Brazilian show. So I kind of so I stole it and um and put it on my own YouTube channel. So yeah, I've seen to, that. Yeah, seen yeah. My, yeah. Wife and I, my wife and I watched it, Simon. <laughs> yeah, the, the audio you had, was you had a lot of hair there. Yeah, yeah I had hair and sideburns. And actually, you guys were talking about hair before. Here's something that I'll just that not many people have ever seen this photo. But if you want to talk about how my hair looked back in there when Hysteria was released, there you go. Oh, wow. Nice. Dude. 100%. Dude. My Lord. So, the- <laughs> so don't worry, Ben. When I was in school, I, my teachers used to say all the exact kind of thing because I went to a high school that wasn't really – it wasn't super out of suburbs or anything. So there wasn't a lot of rock and roll. It was all pretty kind of nerdy. And, and, um, and I was the one guy in the whole school that had long hair. So I used to just, uh, you know, Excellent. why don't, why don't you wear a school dress as well? You know, blah, yep. blah, blah. But, um, <laughs> my favorite was when I waited tables, I was like, really? Cause I could spit in your food. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and my parents own the restaurant, so I could spit in your food, yeah. you know, yeah. and get away with it. You know, like, <laughs> Never understood know, that. It, that that's not a time where you want to be making a uh, a judgment on someone or insulting them is it no yeah. definitely no. definitely <laughs> not they <laughs> really got knocked out when i got my ears pierced <laughs> oh really yeah yeah oh yeah i had both <laughs> my ears pierced in high school too yeah me too I, I didn't even tell my parents i just came home i just went to the local hairdressing okay. store where they were doing ear piercings and i came home yep. one day with them and my mom was like, oh, no, what have you done? What have you done? Um, but it's not as funny as the story when I got my first tattoo, which actually wasn't, I wasn't very young. It was only about 10 years ago or something. And I showed my mom and she wouldn't talk to me for a month. And oh, then wow. after that month, she said, okay, so how long until it fades away? She thought it was a temporary. <laughs> she was oh, wow. and, and I said, no, no, it doesn't oh, rub man. off. But um but as luck would have it, I didn't know when I got the word at the time, which says faith, that because uh, my mum's Serbian, that um, Vera, Vorushka in Serbian means faith. So I actually ended up getting my mum's name. And after I told her that, that she was she was a bit better about it. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. cool. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. yeah. oh, one that's one of those weird, weird accidents or not, depending wow. on what you believe in the universe, yeah. where yeah. my friends had been hassling me for five years saying, Dude, if you don't get this first tattoo soon, we're going to hold you down and get a big love heart on your shoulder that says "Mum," you know. Yeah. And the and the irony is that when they did get me the um, the tattoo session as a birthday present, I ended up getting my mother's name. So isn't it funny awesome. how it works? Yeah, it's awesome. That is I, re- so I remember when I got my first tattoo. I it was I was in Daytona Beach during Bike yeah. Week, and there was a pop up tattoo parlor in town because at that time tattoo parlors were banned in Daytona. Mm. Go figure. It is right. the town of bad decisions. And I went, got a tattoo, 
And I come back to the hotel room where I was staying with my cousin and my uncle, who was my mother's brother. And as soon as he says, your mother's going to kill me. Oh, God. Your mother's going to kill me. I, I let her. So, you know. But yeah. by the time I got home, she was okay. With, she had a couple days to think about it because oh, yeah. we had called home. She's like, he's like, you're calling right now. You're getting in front of this. I'm like, all right. I don't yeah, care. Yeah. I've been wanting to be a rock star my whole life. I'm like, this is the first of many. <laughs> wow. Yeah, exactly. And all my dad said was, that's fine. It's your body. But if your sister wants one, you're a dead man. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny too, isn't it? You said the first of many. Um, I remember when I was essentially almost being held down by my friends and getting my first one, which was on the inside of my upper arm, which is soft skin. And I I was like, what the? I am never doing this again. And then, of course, one year later, I'm going, what will I get next? You know? (laughs) It's funny. How, it's funny how that's that the pain is sort of strangely. Some, I don't know. Something about them is addictive. I don't know what it is, but um, that's what happens. They are addictive. My my wife's got thirteen tattoos. I don't have any. Mm. And yeah, my right. son, my son who's nineteen, he's almost got a full sleeve already. Yeah. You know, they're oh. like, "What are you waiting for?" Well, well the, the trick, I'll get more. Are you going to get more? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. trick, Brendan, is to never get the first one because they are addictive. Once you get that first one. It's like, you know, um, yeah, it's um, like your first hit and then it doesn't matter how bad you resist it, you'll be going to get another one at I'm some just, point. I'm just so indecisive. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so indecisive, I wouldn't know what to get. So, but I'll get. I well, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's me, Brendan. So that's why I, like, I'm okay with just getting pieces of flash tattoo, you know, like, yeah. I'm okay with that because I can go into a tattoo probably go, that's cool. And I'll yeah. get it as opposed to you have yeah. to design the perfect thing yeah. for me. Yeah. 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 Well, Brendan, while yeah. I'm while I'm talking to you, good sir, I just want yes, to firstly sir. say that that um, uh, that all of you are just the sweetest human beings, and I'm so lucky that I can call you guys friends now, and that we've we've met online over the last couple of years during COVID. But not only are you the sweetest human beings, you're all very talented as well. And as all of you know, um, I'm fortunate enough to be playing a, a Neil Daly 5150 in the Van Halen show. But I'm also fortunate enough to have recently acquired something else. <laughs> that no one has seen yet, but Brendan knows about oh. it because he built it. And, oh, um, and I guess oh. over there you'd call it a shovel and down here we would call it a spade. So okay. uh, ah. um, I just think it's the coolest, most unique thing that, that honestly anyone's yeah. ever given me. And um and it's so cool. I thought, okay, this, this, I've got to make do more with this than have it be a novelty. I need to actually get this thing playing, right? And, um, and I have to say, I didn't have to get it playing in the end at all. I thought I would because it's a shovel. I thought it was going to be um, hard work. Actually, I can tell you, Brendan, that um, this thing, I've got like a very high action um, session guitar that I use to, to play slide when someone needs a kind of a quasi lap steel part or something. Sure. But, this, this thing plays better than that. So it's, oh, nice. I mean, it's got an action that's, you know, it's like two inches at least, but it's perfect because that's what you're going to do. Yeah. I don't have any pesky frets getting in the way, you know. And, <laughs> no, um, you won't. You won't. No. So maybe you without won't. further ado, I should show people what you have done and then um, I'll, I'll oh, pull dude. out and find my slide somewhere and I'll, um, dude, I'll do that would be am- that would be amazing, man. Well, oh he's God. grabbing that. I can tell him Canadian that I have American influence, but part of them Commonwealth because we have spades as well, but those are spade shovels, which is a type of yeah. shovel. Right. We call a shovel a shovel, but here we call right. a spade a spade too. Oh, you do. <laughs> Look at that. that. Look, I mean, really, machine heads on the handle. Come on. That, that was not the- easy. That was. That Wait, was Simon. Not easy, let's see man. that nut. Let's see the nut again. Get a load oh, of this nut. Oh, that was flipping brilliant. Piece of aluminum, man. And then and then the strings are going through an eyelet. Starts out like this. Yes. Yeah, so you can see oh, there's yeah. just some little holes there. Oh, and so, the string through because. Oh, and he signed it for me too. So let me put it in right. Oh, let's see. Isn't that, that beautiful? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's brilliant. I mean, the only the only thing that I didn't do was I'm not sure about the uh, where the jack is. You know, if it's going to catch on anything or right. when you played it. Yeah, um, there. Um, uh, no, but, no, the jack, 
the jack's fine. What I am going to have to figure out, and I'll probably it's do this strap, Joe, right? Um, my guitar tech is to where to put a strap nut. Right. On the well, top so that that's I can the actually thing. stand with it. You can. Well, I was going to put another one right on the horn there, like with a, on the edge of the shovel, but I think it would be too awkward. But I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you know, I, it's cool that we you did that one. Oops. But um, and and then I thought, sorry. Well, I've already been doing some gardening with it, so it works for that. Off the bottom, and then cool. hang on, hang on a minute. I've got one of those little Yamaha. Um, what do you call them? THR. Oh, THR. So those sound good. Yeah, yeah. They do sound good. But wait till you hear your, wait till you hear your shovel plugged into it. This is gonna be so cool. I think I hear an actual good. guitar player play a shovel. Play my shovel. This. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How's that volume level? Is that all right? Get the hell out. Yeah, yeah. I'm losing my mind. Turn, turn that up even I mean, a little more. <laughs> yeah. I would never dream that an action that high would be cool to play, but it really is. You know? <laughs> Look at that. I know, right? <laughs> you park a car no, over there. It is the coolest thing <laughs> ever. Oh, <laughs> what, fun. what about um i mean it is it is van halen strut what about a bit of dirty movies or something should i see if i can play that on it oh, you can you goodness. can even turn you can turn it up a little bit it's a there's actually a way I've figured out that I can lean it on my leg. I'm without, sorry that I can't put this. Without so, yeah. poking yourself. Yeah, it's a little dangerous. Without, yeah. yeah, because you have to <laughs> feet. You have to feet. Yeah. Careful now. So, watch you out you for the careful. twins. Yeah, watch out for the twins there. <laughs> yeah, be All right. Hang on. <laughs> so this is a little lamp. So. Yeah, I think that's cool. Oh my god. There you go. That is too nice. cool, man. That's oh, wild, man. isn't it? That is wow. too wow. cool. Holy crap, crap dude. That's a great call. So, you know, I'm going to have to put. I'm, now, we weren't going to play dirty movies on the gig, but you know, I'm going to have to do dirty movies and, oh, have my guitar, yeah. and have my guitar tech. Just while the drum groove is going in, should I just come come out with this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. 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 You just yep. got to figure out the strap. I got the one strap button, but you can either you know you know you'll to, figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out for sure. And even if we can't figure out the strap, it won't matter because you know even if my guitar tech came and held it at height, oh, and then I go. just walked up behind because obviously I'm going to need to swap to the electric for the verses. Right. Um, even if he came out and held it. And, you know, maybe I could have him walk out like it looks like he's going to do some gardening or something. Yeah. Or put yeah, it on a stand. Put it on a, anyway. put it on a stand in front of you. Boink. You know, that might yeah, work yeah. too. I've, I've actually got one of those um, waist-high acoustic guitar right. stands, so nice. I could put it on that. Although it would be pretty funny if he brought it out in a wheelbarrow or something, you know? That would be awesome. Ah, oh, that would wow. be great. Yeah. Dude, we'll put, thank uh, you so much. Holy cow. But anyway, so, hang on. Wow. That so I can't awesome. thank you enough, Brendan. Wow, that no. is the coolest, coolest. Awesome. And it, play, it plays beautiful. It's nice. Big. It's Brandon. actually not, not that tricky, believe it or not, to play like um, like normal things you play on a guitar, like that Dirty Movies lick. No problem. Yeah. It just it plays fine. I mean, it's, Good. I and thought it, it was going to be really, really, like I'd have to relearn how to play that nah. that melody. But actually, you don't. All I did... Um, I know that on a lot of your guitars and, and the cigar box things, you put, put like low strings, right? right. Like yeah. low pitch. Yeah. Um, and on this, all I did was I just put on like a, a standard B, a standard G, and a standard D. 
Nice. So it's basically like the middle three strings of the guitar, right. which is what yeah. plays the melody yeah. on oh, you can, Yeah, you can pull whatever you want on there. It's awesome. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because and, that, and, and, and for anyone that doesn't know this, even though this seems completely like a novelty, Brendan has made the scale length from the saddle to the nut yeah. 26 inches, which is the same as a guitar. So you can put whatever strings and tune nice. them normal. And yeah. it plays great. Too cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's 25 outstanding. and a half or 26. I can't even remember what I did. I tried yeah, it to make was, it as close to it, 25 it and a half, pretty, I think. It was pretty close. close. 25 and a half. Close to 26. Yeah. Okay. But obviously, because it doesn't have frets, it actually yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. matter. You just tune it to whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. But, um, well, my, my, my issue was, <laughs> I'll tell you this now because you have it, Simon. So, mean, the paint... Yeah. The paint thing really messed me up because uh, I had that's the second time I painted it. The first time I painted oh. it, it was awesome, right? And then all of a sudden I went to put clear coat on it. Yeah. It all like almost it, it kind of like orange peeled up. And I was like, no. Oh, whoa. So so I had to sand it down and repaint it. That's why it's a mess. Um, well, I'm but, sorry that no, no, no. That, no, it's fine. Work, it's, it's fine. And actually it'll like relic itself. You, you can and I it's it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, but I was, I was so, I was so it's worried. So cool. I was like, it, man, it, I hope it makes it. <laughs> so. It actually, it it made it just fine in one piece, and actually made it pretty quick as well. Because during COVID, of course, international postage times were crazy, months and months. But yeah. um, it came good. It's it's given me plenty of time to practice with it before the show. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, you did. Yeah. You just did me really proud, man. That that. That's amazing. I thank you so much for playing that thing. It's, we are you know, so, so you, proud of yeah. both of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Proud of both of you guys. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Honestly, really Brendan, it, it's so it's so humbling to have your expertise build such something oh, yeah. so unique and such a novelty, but also that plays so easily and it sounds great. Like it does. I thought, I'm feel, I'm looking at it, I'm going, where's the pickup? Yeah. <laughs> and um that's right yeah. there, man. That surface mount pickup. You know that well, with my with my logo on it, that's it. And it, you know? and mm -hmm. it sounds it sounds fantastic. And I don't need to even change the settings of of the THR amp from the regular electric guitars like a Strat yep. or a Humber. Yeah, it's no, it plug in and there it is. It's perfect. You know, it so. really loves distortion and fuzz and everything. It sounds they like sound a big humbucker. Yeah, it, it does. It really okay. sounds like a I big think, smooth humbucker. Yeah, I think I it's a three. I think it's a three K, a three or four K. It's not even that. You know. That, well, that brutal. Yeah, it's it like saturates a, nicely though. Yeah, it, does. it really does. It you really know, does. so so I guess if you know if it's low output like that, it's almost probably like what like a P90 or an old path. Something, or something yeah, something like, like that. that. You um, and you can like if if you need to get that closer, you can just put some thicker double sided tape underneath that to get the pickup oh, yeah. a little higher. So because that's Ooh, all it's yeah. on with is double sided tape. So no, I don't need to get it closer. It sounds great. Does sound just good. There it is. You know? Yeah, yeah. Right. Awesome, so, uh, man. Thank, dang, thank dang. you ever so much, Brendan. Wow, thank you, you bet. so much. It's uh, it's such such a beautiful uh, bet, gift. My and pleasure. I'll treasure it, and it's going to just stay there in in my studio or in the garden. I can put it either. Yes. You know? Yeah, my pleasure, man. My pleasure, Simon. <laughs> it's an indoor or an outdoor guitar. That's it's yeah. indoor. That's right. Exactly, yeah. man. Nice. Yeah, if you Let ever, me if ask you, ever... you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, somebody out with that. What's going on over on the coming up with Andrew and Brad and yourself on the 5150 show? Well, uh, as we're now kind of getting closer to the gig, I think what we're going to do is is have little behind the scenes stuff of the corner hotel preparations, you know, uh, like like rig rundown for the wet dry wet. Um, in fact, I've got a new toy that I'm plugging in today uh, after I jump off with you guys. Um, which I haven't used before, and of course, it most people will know what that is. Oh wow! So um, that's nice. the a, a brand new Variac that they sell here in Australia, and um, nice. uh, I've got um, I've got the Sir SL sixty eight head that I'm kind of using as the main tone generator, and it does have. Uh, John Sir has put it like a, a low power mode switch, which instantly loads it down, but and then rebiases. Although um, I've done some measuring and I've come to learn through um, some other people's, you know, just going down the rabbit hole, that that really, really squishy kind of fair warning tone that Ed gets is from loading it down much, much more, like almost as far down as 50% voltage. Um, mm. 
so for you guys, that would be uh, what well, you're at 120, right? So it's like nearly down to 60 volts, which is crazy. Apparently, the the lamp on the front of the amp doesn't even come on, you know. Um, but huh. um, in fact, I was watching a video of Jim Gaustads, and he was he was saying he got a great fair warning tone. Yeah. And he, he, his voltage was down to I think it was almost 60 volts. Yeah. So hmm. so I'm going to give that a try today. I'm going to hopefully not you know, damage it or do anything weird with the amp. Well, I mean, um, when you're testing an amp, you do the same thing in reverse. You slowly bring the voltage up, you know, so. Sorry yeah, no, I think, I think it'll be fine. Everyone says it's fine making it lower. You just can't make it higher, you know, so, um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which obviously I won't do. So I'm very, uh, I'm fast. I've got a rehearsal with the boys tomorrow and I'm very fascinated to, um, to see what the, our voltage here is 240 volts. So I guess I'm going to be down to about 140 volts, and we'll see. Wow! Wow! We'll see what happens. I'll, I'll let yeah. you guys know if it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Excellent, bro. Excellent. Fantastic. Yeah. But thanks, thanks for letting me jump in, guys. I've been really oh, yeah. enjoying the, the Def Leppard chat. Um, that Hysteria album was actually a really big part of my early teenage years you know i guess i would have been about 14 or something um, here. and and yeah and and actually um i was Thanks. listening to that album pr pretty much like non-stop uh when i also kind of fell madly and you know in infatuation with this older girl who was you know two years older which is <laughs> seems funny now but she seemed like she seemed like a very much older woman at only 16 back then um yeah. And so that that hysteria album is kind of the soundtrack to to that whole year and all those feelings, you know. So when I hear that, when I put that vinyl on even now, I'm like instantly 14 again and in love, you know. It's funny. Right on. I hear yeah. you. Love hurts, Simon. <laughs> love bites. Yeah. Nice. That's it, baby. Very <laughs> cool, man. Very cool. Nice. Well, I'll jump out and let you guys do your thing and, and uh, finish up the show. But thank you for letting me jump in. So Here's good to see you all. And, uh, yeah, and dude, keep... nice to see you. Be well, bro. Yeah, see you. Nice. Yeah. Big shout out to everyone in the chat, yeah. of course, as well. And it looks like uh, when I'm uh, next on the northern west coast, I'm going to try and try and get myself to Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Island and, and catch up with uh, Hip Middleworks over there. Because I've been to Vancouver. I've been to Seattle. I've been to a lot of those places. But not Vancouver Island. It seems like a pretty cool spot. You yeah. and me both. I've never been there either, and I would love to visit there. Cool. Yeah, because you're on the other side, aren't you, Ben? You're on the east. Exactly. Side. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, beautiful parts of the world. Absolutely. It's been, you know, with COVID and then and then just, uh, you know, not doing international tours for a few years before. It's been a while since I've been over your way, but um, hopefully soon. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. And again, yeah. that show is May 19th. Yeah, um, yep. and it's on our calendars. So, and what market. what we will be doing, I think, Tony, that you and I have talked about, is because your Halenville show is in your time Wednesday evening. That happens to be the exact same time we'll be loading in and sound checking. So we should do some live crosses. That'll be really fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it would be so cool. We have some stuff in the in the works. In that, the works, um, yeah, yeah. Right. So nice. Maybe we ought to be hush hush about that at this. Yeah, let's point. let's let's be hush be hush hush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, yeah, exciting stuff. But May nineteenth is vastly approaching. I know Simon that this has been postponed a couple of times, and um, oh, yeah, we're dude, we're right there with you. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's gonna happen this time. Yeah, it's one. Of, it's I'm glad I'm glad it's really happening this time because obviously it's sort of every time that it gets moved, we lose. We, one thing is, of course, we lose ticket sales because uh, me and the Corner Hotel have always offered refunds because that's just the right thing to do. So we lose ticket sales, but also you can feel that the the wind come out of the sails of everyone involved in the band and everything too because it just mm -hmm. that initial excitement that you all had and that we we're doing the big memorial show for Ed after he passed. It's so long since then now, and there's been so many postponements, and we've had to cancel so many rehearsals that um, it's really good that it's that it's happening now. Yeah, because I think otherwise we would just have to call the whole thing off and go. Oh, yeah. let's do this in a couple yeah. of years. You know. Yeah. 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 But, um, wonderful, wonderful to see you all. Uh, great to see you too, Ben. In, uh, in too. there, and um, uh, yeah, be well. Thanks for having me jump in. Sorry to 
um, hijack for a few minutes. But no, no, nice to see you, bro. Always nice right, to there, see bro. you. At the show, Brendan Shovel. I'm going to go yeah. do some gardening yeah. now. And hopefully, All right, paint buddy. Come on, yeah. Be <laughs> <laughs> well, bro. Uh, take care. Good 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 see you soon, good dude. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, Simon. Holy crap. Simon right. Hosford. Simon Hosford. Damn. Like it for us. Holy shit. Classy Ooh. guy right there. You get a little taste. You get a little taste of that. I'm so glad the show was finally coming together. I was just thinking the last time he was on hanging on my channel, we were talking about that show. It was, yeah, you know, set to happen like two weeks from that point. And yeah, I know how oh, oh. he was, and he's put so much work into this. So, and yeah, he's got dirty Brandon. movies on, dude. So. I, can, I, I, my, uh, I can't even. Brendan, that shovel is badass. Brother. I can't think anymore. It is I so cool. <laughs> I can't speak anymore. I'm done for the show. <laughs> but she just blew my mind, man. It, Dude, so humble and talented, and holy yeah. crap, man, that thing sounded great. And I, I'm, not, sound, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not patting myself on the back, but that thing sounded really good. Dude, dude. It sounded is, it, is it one of those situations you're like, it didn't do that when I plugged it in? Well, no, it didn't. No, no, no. <laughs> well, he he did say that he has plans to play the slide part to Dirty Movies with oh, it. Man, that's gonna be so cool, man. So, that you might get a couple cool. phone calls saying, "Hey, how can a fella get one of those?" Yeah, I, I already had another. I had a couple, couple of shovel <laughs> orders already. So, so yeah. I, I guess at at this juncture, we're gonna have to say, Brendan B. Square, yeah, yeah. handcrafts yeah. custom shovel. Guitars. I'm not changing my business card. But, and cigar yeah. box guitars. Yeah. We do both flavors, is yeah. what he's saying. Be back ordered nine months. Yeah. 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 Way cool. How yeah. much for yeah. the guy? Those Way are the little cool. and those are the little pickups, little little humbuckers that are like three, four, and five K. So uh I think he made me one one set of five K and that was a mistake, but they sounded pretty good. So I bet Usually, they do. Usually I get the like the three or the four K, but yeah. So oh Ben's got his. I do. Look at that. Boomster Black uh, makes a comment. He says he wants to tell the engineer he wants that shovel tone. That's cool. It's good to see you, Boomster Black. Yeah, I got the more folky uh, hollow body version here. You know. Yes. Ben, I love or actually semi hollow. Wouldn't it technically be a semi hollow? Yeah, Cause, yeah, because you know, it's got some blocks inside. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll call it a semi hollow for right. you know. For all your right. favorite folk tunes. Andrew's got one too. Everybody, so cool. everybody's got one. Oh, we'll see, this is yeah. This is when Butt Cheeks Tom, got into his Kramer oh, era with his prints and, you know, and custom Carl's graphics. Video. You too can look like CC Deville with your custom graphic. Yeah, Butt Cheeks cigar no, box. That, but that was already there. I didn't have to do anything with that. Oh, yeah. That's well, even better. You, you didn't have to share that info. I'm trying to talk you up here, make an extra sale with you. <laughs> Dude, I, I am not that talented an artist to do something like right. that. So, you just make big decals. Just yeah, yeah. Just a, a wrap, a vinyl thing. wrap. There you go, man. Hey, man, I it. love mine. I got two of them. I'm gonna make a big giant butt cheeks base. I think that's uh, gonna... <laughs> there. You go. The world needs that. Now, yeah, so if you happen to know someone who has an extra prosthetic buck cheek set laying around, ship it on over to him and yeah, he'll... please don't don't send oh, me your used oh, job. You gotta do a you gotta do a pickup on each butt cheek. Oh god. Mm. Yes. <laughs> do not use the middle position. That is a brown sound. <laughs> That's funny. Oh ouch. Oh maybe a maybe a kill switch in there. Ow. <laughs> 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 Uh, is that a mole? No, that's a that's a kill switch. Ed, Ed, <laughs> I've actually done a, a an ice scraper, like one of those shovel, you know, one of those uh, yeah, driveway I, scrapers. Yeah, I'm well aware. Of made one scraper. of those. I've made a uh, pitchfork, uh, just messing around. But yeah, nah, the the shovel's good. The stubble's good. Very cool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> while it's on my mind, let me mention something. And I'm going to show you something, too. How about it? So, you know, we do a show on Wednesday about a, a little Pasadena band. <laughs> what are they called? 
Van, Van Halen. Halen. Yes, Never yeah. heard of Van Halen. Nope. So, not familiar. but I learn about them by tuning in, because I'm you know I'm not aware. No. Who? <laughs> we call yeah. it Halenville. So if you have your eye on it this coming Wednesday night. Check that out. Nice. Nice. That is just too cool. That is awesome. Toshi and Nagi. You're in the van. Yep. Yep. He'll be awesome. right here. Fantastic. On Alan. Wednesday. That's this coming Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. It's going to be a this good This Wednesday. Day. Yeah. Right there. Very cool. Get your questions ready. Toshi in May the 4th. house. Yeah. May 4th, everybody. May 4th. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And that's coming around the corner quickly. This is the last day of April, I guess. Yeah. 30 it is. days in it's April. It's going to be May. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It is May already. All right. Yeah. All right. It'll be May in 15 minutes. Yes, it um, will. Yeah. Sandra, Charles, Tommy, Brendan, dudes, nice to see you. Ben Coombs in the house tonight. Yeah. Oh, goodness. You rock, Ben. Sure. So, I know how for Steve Clark look on there. Who, who we got this week on the hang Sunday night, Ben? Uh, I have Ike, uh, owner of Flipside Music, joining me tomorrow night. Flipside. And then uh, I'm going to, you know, snag old Tommy here uh, for Monday night and Terry right out of the chat. I'm just grabbing people from everywhere. And we'll, we'll do Canucks with guitars on That's Monday. Cool. Yeah. And uh, right. then after that, I don't know. Cool, man. Did you any yeah. any uh, any Nam news? Are you going to be heading to Nam for? Uh, I am June not now? heading to Nam. I am sending uh, Aaron from Elvis Band and JJ's House of Jams. I'm sending them in my steed. Okay, found, that's a lot easier than going yourself. Right, right. Um, less hangovers for one. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> so I'm going to send them both out there. They're going to mingle around the Nam floor, and then that Sunday night after Nam, they're going to hop on the hang and say, "Hey." I saw this, this. and nice. I'm like, hey, did you see that? Like, yep. What was cool. it like? Not too shabby. Right on. Good. Nice, nice question. Yep. Nice. <laughs> Good way to do it. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, much less travel. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A long right. day to get to L.A. Yeah, it's a long, long trip. Uh, so yeah, and hopefully as my cousin Doug isn't sick for once. Uh, Tuesday night we'll do NASCAR, where we'll talk NASCAR. Because right Keith's on. been wanting to tune in, but... My cousin's like, oh, I'm sick. <laughs> he's off working for your ESPN this weekend anyway. So uh, apparently he's on ESPN this weekend, so he's too good to hang out with his cousin. Oh, uh, uh, okay. The voice <laughs> of Cornhole. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> Living right. the dream. <laughs> right. Oh, Someone's got to do it. Right. Not yeah. me. Um, so we appreciate you guys mm -hmm. watching. Um, Absolutely. Tonight, hope yeah. your weekend's going great. Thanks to Ben Coombs, always a pleasure. To Thanks hang for out having with me. Ben and yeah, to see Ben. You rock, yeah. Ben. Doors always open. Open. You rock, brother. Always a fun hang over here on Saturday nights. Uh, I lurk on occasion. I watch on replay on occasion. This is my usual practice time on Saturday nights, but I'm like, nope. Steve Clark, got to talk about Steve Clark. Got to. Yep. So, you know, hopefully, we, you know, well, I guarantee everybody learned something because none of us knew any of that trivia. So I guarantee right. we ne learned at least 10 things tonight. Thank That's you, Sam. Cool. That's Very for cool. sure. Very cool. That is for sure. <laughs> yep. um, and we will be back here next week. And don't forget, kids, you can hop in here and play some 10 shot rock and roll trivia. We're going to have a backstage barbecue bash. We're going to yep. take all of our May winners starting yep. next week. Four of you are going to join us backstage 
Yep. Probably have a special guest or two in addition. Yep. Play some more trivia, win more prizes. Yeah, yes. I, I may have invited myself on already, as I said. But, I will, but, Kate, Thank you. I heard him. He's <laughs> off. He's like, is he off the air yet? Nope. <laughs> Sorry, Pop. And like we say, this party will probably involve food. Yeah. Oh, I guarantee it. Ooh. Yeah. I'll be eating something on air. Wink, wink. Yes. <laughs> oh, so. right. Leftovers for my birthday batch <laughs> the week before. Nice. Tom knows what I'm talking about. Nice. All right. Edibles. Yep. Um, we will see you guys next Saturday night. Have a Good great night, weekend. Right there, you guys. Good Wave night. on camera, Ben. This doesn't do anything. This just, they don't know. I got to do Good that. Night, everybody. Out. We're out of here. Be well. Yep. Yeah, again. Yeah. Kennedy. <laughs>